live hey guys welcome back to we watch movie i am mike i am jay and we are gonna tell shitty jokes about better movies than we'll ever make guys let's tonight. crack a bud light and get gay together it's the yeah. only way to do it <laughs> that's how you get stronger yeah that's it's what i heard for your cock muscles oh i uh so just so you guys know i know that somebody asked about it uh last week or something i just started playing uh, jedi survivor it's fucking awesome really good game is that the new Star Wars? Yeah, game? The, the sequel to uh, Fallen Order. Fuck, dude! The last Star Wars game I knew about was the one that was like the Old Republic or something. I don't know. It was the one. Oh, no. Knights of the, Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah, where you could like battle yeah, with that. That shit like, was back tables. on the OG Xbox. Okay, so it wasn't that one. It was the one on the new ones. It was like it was just a, you could. It was this new campaign. It was like all online or something. Oh, I don't, I don't know. know. Oh, Battlefront, um, maybe Battlefront. I just got Mario Super Mario Brothers three, so I'm pretty excited about that. I don't know. I heard it's a I heard it's a bestseller, Super yeah, Mario you, Three. I heard it's gonna break a, records. He has a squirrel tail now. It's Dude, deal. it's so crazy though that Jedi Survivor though, like that storyline alone. I know you haven't played Fallen Order, and I'm not gonna spoil it for anybody here that's not played it. But Jesus Christ, dude, if they'd make a movie out of that, that would be it was incredible, fucking absolutely incredible. That would save a lot of the Star Wars shitty hopes right now. They need to come up with something like that. That and by the way, it's a, well. I heard the rumor is that they're going to make they're going to adapt the Fallen Order uh, video game into a into a new Disney Plus TV show. The guy that they hired to do the voice and the mocap, named Kyle Kestis, is the character's name. He's an actual TV actor. So why would a studio hire a real TV actor to do all that shit unless they have plans on him being in a live act, uh, ad adaptation at one point? Is he hot? Yeah, he's a pretty good looking guy, well, and he's a redhead too. Unusual. Oh hell. That's 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 a winning ticket right there. Maybe they have, uh, like, know, ah, he's got red hair. Nobody some of them may that. not have souls, but some of them are goddamn good looking men. Yeah, I like that. I like good looking men. It's one of my favorite. It's my second favorite thing next to chocolate and hot baths. Yeah, to roll over with your Bud Light in one hand and see a hot dude on your arm. That's the mm -hmm. best part right there. There's nothing better. There's nothing better. It's the barley and the wheat. It's the wheat. I, on the other hand, prefer Zima, but no one, not everyone can afford it. Yeah. What 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 is Smirnoff Ice going to do now? What are they going to do? What happened? Their sales have had to go down since you know Bud Light. Smeared off did? No, I'm just guessing because that's oh. that's what that's what us noodle men used to drink. Is that what you call it, noodle men? Well, Why think, are there uh, stars on? Oh, that's I think Smeared off is always going to be fine though. That's a mixer for a lot of those drinks. Whew, man, that shit used to be so disgusting. We used to drink that when we were high schoolers. Just let's. We get never got up. no, dude. We could afford no Smeared off. We got like Tavarsky and shit. We got like the cheap rot gut. No, I'm talking about the mixers. The the oh yeah, yeah the, it right. looks like just someone just came in it. Yeah. Like it's like a sprite that someone came in, you know. Yeah, and we yeah. would just chug them. It looks like, like Clarice. It, it, yeah, after you drank it, you look like Clarice after she left Hannibal Lecter. Just a big <laughs> fucking thing of cum on your face. <laughs> it's so veiny. Yagapon with the first super chat of the night. Thanks, boy. He says, "Do you think not in the near future, but eventually an actor's job will be no more when they can just create an actor with CGI?" I think you mean AI, but I mean that's uh, that actually is a, a concern for a, a lot of people right now. They're actually talking about that because as AI uh, improves daily. What they're what actually what people are worried about like you could if an AI gets good enough you know they could they could recreate like Christopher Reeve has passed away they could just stick a CGI AI version of Christopher Reeve and make a new Superman movie all brand new lines and everything it would look just like him and a lot of actors are worried first off it's disrespectful and morbid as a you know you you think about but like okay for example Michael Jackson who passed away you think that they if they could recreate the Michael Jackson voice and everything and they just start putting out new albums. With his what voice. will the McCalkins do? <clears throat> I don't know. You have to lock up your kids and everything. It would just be a whole new wave of terror again. But yeah, <laughs> and it's not just actors. <laughs> Michael Jackson reign of terror has only yeah. just begun. Well, it's, not, it's, not just, uh, it's not just actors, but all, uh, you know, artists, uh, authors, they're all worried about it. Because AIs yeah. can even, like, rudimentary, they, they, like, it's, it's a very rudimentary thing, but they can write poems. It's actually pretty good poems, and they yeah. can put together AI art. So that's just going to keep improving. That's why they want that regulatory body put in place yeah well that's why the writers are on strike they're like stop using ai well now but they're like hey you want to go on strike we will start using ai and now we might just get dude you don't want that's, that, that's another thing we don't want computers to write our drama it's gonna yeah. be like how could you do that to me carol carol my mother abandoned me <laughs> well i mean well you imagine you, shit you imagine like, in like a, a new star Wars movie well yeah imagine a new star wars movie carrie fisher passed away but if they can use ai along with improved yeah. uh, adapted cgi they could just stick her into a new Star Wars movie as as Leia, 
I worry crazy. far more about the written word than I do the CGI, the faces, because it's just like with anything else. Like, hey, look at turtles. Like we always say, like you go back to the practical effects, even though they were stupid fucking puppet muppets like yeah. it's it's still so much better than the best money that cgi can buy some of the shit marvel puts out now the cgi it's like oh my god even if they do replace actors with cgi the the, the naked eye can tell like you can cool. see it and like your body just doesn't believe it i wish we had that for like uh friends and like uh people who cheat like nah well i can tell you know what i mean but like marvel but Marvel does that now because they're just like they're cheap whores, dude. They, they they're like they already got everything from it. They just like do like bottom ass work, bottom feeder work, and they use like really low ass technology. That's why their CG looks like crap. Well, they're running. But, they got like but, seventy billion people on there. Yeah, but also the other. Well, they I think they just laid off more people. But the other thing is, I'm more. If you look at all of it together, though, not just the written word or them using improved AI for like voice emulation as well as using improved CGI. They could literally run a news story tomorrow on any news station that you watch or, or whatever and so talk and give you all sorts of misinformation. That's also a big yeah. problem. The deep fakes out there. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, I just want to say something, by the way. There was, there was a lot of people. There's a lot of people just waiting, just like hanging out in the chat when I got on and I, I put my, my shirt on and um, wiped all the jizz off my face and turned on the camera to start filming. And there's a bunch of people in here hanging out bunch of people that were turned on and they said that they were erect and that guy had a boner and that guy was hard and i just want to say that 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 warms that warms my cockles to come in here and see this it's nice it's nice it's nice having a bunch of people just waiting some people were just chilling out like a fucking taylor swift concert katie just told me by the way uh taylor swift had a concert at like philadelphia yeah. and like a three-night section at philadelphia and there was like fucking like 20,000 people or some shit like that in the streets outside the concert dancing in the streets just because they could hear the music man Swifties are they mean business they should have uh, they should have uh, done the DeBarge rhythm of the night <laughs> rhythm of the night rhythm of the sounds like a music video yeah I'm sure she'll use uh, it Taylor Swift could walk out there and fart in a microphone and it would be a hit good yeah. for her good for yeah. her Zazie's podcast thanks buddy says what's good y'all spoiler alert scream is number one <laughs> That's what you think. I think you're wrong, sir, but we will see. By the way, we were talking like briefly before the stream ever started. You are going to get fucking mad as shit. Mm -hmm. I was looking over this mm -hmm. list before, I, and I, it was like the first time I bought FUBUs, and I didn't really want to go to school because I didn't want people to be like, you wearing FUBUs? Because it did happen. It's embarrassing. I just don't yeah. know. Yeah, I, it's just you guys look so hot. And I can't see all of your faces, but I can see some of your faces, and I can see your words, and I can taste you, and I can imagine what you do look like. And it just, it gets what gets me going, man. Oh, Tanner, I didn't mean to skip you. I'm so sorry. It says, Tanner says, can't wait to meet you guys again at Scarefest. Hey, good times, good times. We're going to fucking be there. That's actually confirmed now. We will be at Scarefest. So mm -hmm. I can't wait to meet, meet you again, Tanner. Bowls. Maybe we'll smoke a bowl. I'm just kidding. Your parents are probably watching this. We will not smoke drugs with you. Unless mm. you give us. I don't know. I'm not I'll do, do it that. if I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Parton. Thanks, buddy. It says hoping they don't cast Nicholas Holt as like that would be garbage sauce from Texas. That's now. fucking yeah. That's I've never even heard that. That's crazy. No, no, no. Mm -mm. Hey, so we promised to start these a little bit earlier and like just groove through. Still do this to go back and forth a little bit. So I'll jump into the list real quick. We'll just we'll start the list with number fifteen and and get back in this the saddle. Um, of men. Uh, let me see here. Just gotta share this screen with you guys. Here. Oh, I want the whole thing. Entire screen. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, slut. Okay. So the, the idea of the show today is we're going to give our top 15 90s horror films of all time. Now, before we get going, I want to say there's a couple movies in our list that you might be like, that's not a horror movie, you fucking dicks. And let me tell you this. The, the only parameters we set were IMDb has to have it listed as a horror film. So mm. we, we both picked off the same list. Um, if IMDb lists as a, as a horror film, it was fair game. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So that's, that's what we do. You want to start it off with your number 15? Who yeah. By the way, I did down? get into, uh, there was like over 2,400 entries on the IMDb. So it would have yeah. taken fucking forever to go through every single one. But I mean, yeah. by the time I got, the, I think I got to page eight or nine. <laughs> it was getting to like, there's no, it was like Sorcerer 2, the Temptress. Like that's a softcore yep. porn movie. I've seen it. Okay, I was it was for research back when I was a kid. But like those are that's not even a horror movie. But it was weird shit like that. So I was like, no oh, way. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and it's only ranked by popularity. So if like one random movie got a couple hits, it would like jump up. I went I went about five or six hundred movies deep, and I'm sure I still missed a couple, but mm. fuck it. All right, so my number best, 15 Dad. is going to be um, Night of the Living Dead, 1990, the Tom Savini. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, I, I don't know, man. When I remember what this is like uh, so scorched in my memory as a young child. I remember watching this and Evil Dead back to back when I was like 10 or 11 years old and following my uncle around the house because I was so fucking scared. I think it's done amazing i think it's got savini's own flair it's just an updated version of ramiro's classic and it's got like some cool stuff on it that he added i think it's an amazing ass fucking movie it's if, if i think of night of the living dead of course everyone's gonna think of the classic ramiro and you should but for me it's always night of the living dead the 1990 remake yeah and it's all depends on like what you can, i mean obviously if you had to say which movie was better it would be ramiro's original version but if like just for originality which- yeah yeah, but if you think about like which one you'd rather watch, I feel like a lot of us would like if nobody's watching, throw on the remake because it's in color, you know, and it's a lot of updated. Yeah, and it's the yeah. same movie pretty much. So that's a good choice. Yeah, I was in my honorable mentions for sure. Um, I wouldn't have been surprised that one's higher up on your list, to be honest with you. Uh, my number 15. Oh, God, this is going to be fucking painful. I left off some goddamn bangers, you guys. This is going to be my probably the most, most. Like erroneous, I don't really say erroneous, or like random one that like erroneous, there's gonna yeah. be there's gonna be some movies that you guys see in my honorable mentions that are like that movie was way more popular, you fucking dick, you dick. But uh, I can't help it. I love this movie, Night Watch. Um mm. Ewan McGregor, Nick Nolte. It was a remake of another movie, a fucked up movie, man. Uh, I think we I think we did a review for it a while back. Um, but uh Ewan McGregor's this night clerk at like a morgue. And like crazy shit starts happening, and then there's murders, and again, Nick Nolte, and it's just a fuck. I think it's pretty sure it's Nick Nolte, not Gary Busey. Yeah, no, it's Nick Nolte. If you guys haven't seen Night Watch, you gotta give that a watch. It'll fuck with you, man. It's got I always get that one confused with uh, Nightbreed. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And there's also another movie called Night Watch that came out in, like the 2000s, uh, too. That's like a, a French movie or some shit. But yeah, I fucking love that movie. Yeah, uh, I hope stuff. I know probably seven people have seen it. Hey, say in the chat if you've seen it, say I know what you're talking about. And I liked it. You're right, Mike. It was good. Night Watch um, is what a peeping Tom says if he gets caught. I was just Night Watch. <laughs> I was out here looking at owls and shit. Yeah, I'm a security guard for Com H. Yeah. Yeah, I was Niner. gonna say uh Michael Pardon's right. Nightbreed is the yeah, Nightbreed is the Clyde Barker movie. That's what I it's a Clyde yeah. Barker, it's based on the Clyde Barker movie. Okay, so this one's gonna be low, and I think a lot of people are like, what the fuck crack did he smoke today? But I'm sorry, I can't there were so many good ones, it was really hard, and that's what she said. Uh it's mm-hmm. gonna be the faculty. This is my number 14. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very low, it's very low. But guaranteed I mean to jack you up. It's guaranteed to jack you up and all the good things, and, and you know what? Good he off. needs to comb your hair. Okay, he still hadn't combed his hair. Um, it's a great movie. It's a good alien film. I liked it, and Robert Patrick's great in it as well. But uh, and Josh Hartnett again, he doesn't know how to comb his hair in any movie that he did in the '90s. I don't understand it. But I, I don't know. Like it's still, it's still one of those movies. If you were like, if somebody came back and they're like from the from the future, and they were like, what's a night? What's a list for your '90s movies? You got to watch before you die. And it would be the faculty. But I just don't think it's a top 10 movie at all. But I still love it, though. I still think it's great. It's also got a killer soundtrack. I'm going to throw my body in front of you right now. My naked body. Like, if you and I were butt-fucking in a hotel room somewhere, and a hitman came in, and I Mm -hmm. said, just take my life, but don't hurt Jay. And I jumped all over Unless it was Tim the Oliphant, then he can take her both our lives. Yeah, and while they're shooting me in the back, I'm like, just put it in your mouth one more time, Jay. Uh, No, I, I, I see a lot of people being like, that should be higher. That's too low. What the fuck? And let me tell you guys something. I'll just I'll go ahead and spoil this for you right now. Faculty did not make my top fifteen. Did not do it. Oh, I didn't. It was not going to touch it. No, I wanted. I, I thought. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, I thought for sure it'd be like it higher or for you. Yeah. I, yeah. No, I bet. I and I. I adore the fucking movie. I do. And my list is a mix of like, it's a mix of I just love that movie and I don't give a fuck how bad it is. I'm gonna put it in there anyway. And like this movie's. I love it, but it's not good enough to be there. And that was the faculty for me. As much as I love that fucking movie, and like I wanted to put it in my, my top ten. And when you go back and rewatch it, the nostalgia's there and the timeliness is there. But it and it's kind of it's kind of it's well, I think it's kind of corny. It's a broken ass movie though. Why well, it's like, not just the yeah, and the, it's and corny. Shit. It's a little yeah, corny. And, yeah, it's 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 a fucking fun ass movie, and I love <laughs> like it. Like when they're all standing, not that great. 
like when they're waiting on Zeus to give them all come in the mouth when they're all standing in the rain. And yeah. they're like, oh. <laughs> and the crap, the crap so bad. Oh, yeah, it, it's bad. But by the way, like uh D Mitch says, let him tweak. Let him tweak. <laughs> Just tweak and let him tweak. Uh and all right, so uh, my number 14, it's an excellent choice. I'm glad someone got it in theirs because it hurts my ding dong to not have it in mine. Uh, my number 14, uh, I'm going to get way more. Um, as we go on, I'm going to get a lot more mainstream. I'm not just trying to be a fucking weirdo, but brain scan. That's a good I, one. Goddamn, dude, I adore this movie so much. It is no other movie in the history of the world has the vibe that brain scan has. Edward Furlong, it's like trick or treat mixed with a fucked up emo Edward Furlong movie. Not the trick or treat with the little yeah. backhead Sam, but the one with the rock star. But if you guys don't know, this kid plays like a CD-ROM murder game and this fucking crazy guy from the game pops out of his computer and he's all like, you know, and like he literally murders people in the game but finds out he's murdering him in real Sounds life. Sounds like Elon and Musk. <laughs> I have this recurring dreams that I, I killed somebody and like, the, I never like see myself kill somebody, but like the cops are after me and I'm all like scared and it feels yeah. really realistic. And I think it comes from this movie. It feels like a real fucking, there's something about this movie that feels real. Like, I don't know, like yeah. sleepwalking and like you killed somebody kind of vibe. Surreal. It, but it's also it's surreal. Yeah. It's rock and roll, but it's also like kind of gritty and true crime feeling. And it's also kind of a shitty <laughs> movie yeah. at times, but I love brain scan. Iron if Wolf. you haven't seen it, you've got to watch that shit. Iron Wolf says stay alive. Yeah, that that it, it's the better version of stay alive. Stay alive is a yeah. ball sack of juicy, nasty, butt cracky, garbage, juicy ass movie. Like that I, movie. I, I, did you ever watch that? Stay alive. No, it literally was like, do it looked like it wasn't even finished. Like they just released a half finished movie. Like it was like, I, I swear I saw a green screen somewhere. <laughs> they were still putting effects in when they released that shit. It looked like a like a a daily that they just put together all the dailies and just <laughs> threw it out. Yeah, it's like like uh like Scatman Crothers. No, uh uh the ga the gather the gallows. Yeah, kind of it was kind of like, like that, I know right? that Frankie Muniz suffers like memory loss, but thank God he probably forgot that movie because that's a terrible movie that he was <laughs> oh, in. Oh, was it Frankie Muniz? Yeah, dude? he was in that. Oh shit, I gotta watch. I gotta watch Cry Wolf too. I, I've had a couple people mention that to me, and I've never seen it before. Um, let's pop in real quick and see what some of you folks are saying. Catch up with you a little bit, if you will. Put 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 a finger in you, uh, on you, around you tickle it a little bit dude the super chats look fucking weird now like they change their things so they don't stick out as much so i hope we don't miss any oh no um, smudge says I, a lot of people seem to like stay alive and i don't understand it at all i don't believe that's true unless you're like going to a, like a four like a third world country where they're just now getting movies i know i guess the greatest thing i've ever seen <laughs> I, i'm typically not a fan of movies that try to be like but it's a video game but it's real life like gamer with gerard butler and shit brain scan is the only one that does it for yeah. me because it does this first person point of view and he's like holding his hands and some dude wakes up in his skivvies at night and he's like eh. it just gives you a dark feeling but it's also kind of like rock and roll it's just it's it's a horror dude, movie man too. i'll cool. tell you one uh uh what was it uh who's the guy that played how do i forget his name uh played Dr uh, dread Carl Urban. Carl Urban. You remember that shitty, the, the adaptation they did for Doom with The Rock? And it was fucking yeah. awful. And that could have been so badass because you had Gerard Butler as the main protagonist and you had Do um, you had The Rock as an antagonist in the movie. The coolest part they, they did in that entire fucking shitty ass, terrible movie was they did like one part of it where it was like a first person shooter. It goes into like fucking hardcore Henry. And I, yeah. I, I just saw it pop up. And I, the reason why I brought it up is because I saw it brought up on YouTube as it suggested. And I watched it. It was like three minutes. God damn, it was cool. I mean, yeah, it was like low quality and the CG wasn't there. But dude, when he like looks in the mirror and then it goes, it like go, you're like walking around with a gun. I was like, dude, that's fucking badass. They should have just shot the whole movie like Hardcore Henry. Yeah, yeah. Hardcore Henry, I think, would have been better if it veered in and out of that. Because by the end of the movie, we were both like, oh, like fucking sick from just watching it constantly happen. It's like one gimmick that went on too long, but it was a great idea if you just interjected it at the right time. Yeah. Oh, interjection. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, Devin wow. Osmond, I heard rumors Carl Urban's going to be Johnny Cage. I've heard that, too. Yeah. I don't I don't care. Like, everyone's like, he's, he's little, too old. Yeah. But whatever, I want to see dude. Carl Urban get in something. Dude, I, I still think they should just make a dread, too, and say, fuck it. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what they should do. But I'm happy for Carl Urban getting a big role because he's been fucked a lot. What's up, Brian's Nightmare? How are you doing is the question. Hey, doing good, man. Thanks. No, Hope dang, you're doing well. You're a fucking riot. I hope you woke up from your nightmare recently. That's awful. You shouldn't have <laughs> right. one forever. 
<laughs> it's his in-laws. Uh, Tanner Bowles says, oh, I, fuck, shit. I'm all over the place, guys. Yep, uh, missed that. T- fucking Jesus Christ. Stacey James, the website I write for is ta- talking about having AI write full articles about music yeah. and artists. See, Name that's them, that, Stacey. that's exactly what I'm talking about, man. Like that, it's it's a super big concern for a lot of people. Now they got more I, so, and like uh, I don't know who said it recently. Um, they actually compared it to the like the invention of the atom bomb, the, the potential disaster that AI could have. Yeah. On, no, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I know, I know, but the potential for disaster that AI, unregulated AI, I should say could have on humanity. I'm not talking about Skynet necessarily, but I'm just talking about that type of idea is mind blowing. I mean, if there's no regulation and these companies can start just, they don't even need to hire people anymore. They can literally just get one or two programmers, let the AI do everything. And then, you know, it's fun. It, like, that's like a scary thought. So yeah, man, I mean, I feel for you in that particular field. Like it's, it's, it's a scary thought. Uh, here's the thing. Like I've played around with chat GPT. Cause literally, I was at a bar one night, yeah. and 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 uh, we we're talking to a group of people, and some girls like, "I gotta go home." Oh, actually, I don't, cause I'm just gonna let Chat GPT do my homework for me. I guess she was in college, or whatever. And we're like, "What the fuck is that?" And she's like, yeah, "I don't know about Chat GPT." She's like, yeah. "You need to get on the time." So I went home, and I was like, "What the fuck is this shit?" What's crap did this bitch smoke? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she needs to do her studies, uh, <laughs> but I looked it up, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is crazy!" Now for what I do, like when I write articles and stuff like that, like this specifically in my voice. So I'm not famous enough to be like, obviously, or at all to be like chat GPT, write this article in my voice. And it still would come out. Even if you did, it would come out fucked up. What's fun is you can go on there and be like, Hey, write this, write an article about beach ball in the voice of Al Pacino. Be like, Hey, let me tell you about beach ball. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like it'll actually nail that a little bit, but I think that like the only way that you, people will be able to use that, for writing articles is like the clickbait type articles for the most part, like, Hey, write about the 10 best beach vacations this summer. And then people who use that just to get like the, uh, uh, the keywords and like the tags and stuff and to build up like a a clickbait website or something. But as far as like actual, like written art goes, I feel like people would have to be a lot more um, devious about it to get into it, but it's coming. I'm sure. The problem is, is that they already got, they, they literally have poems that are yeah. written but and and not only are they they're actually they follow like there's a structure to the poem it's not like random like it used to be random these things are like the ai is getting smarter and smarter and smarter like every gen- every revolution as they continue to improve it the problem is is that once it starts you know of course you know the big concern is self awareness and we get into skynet and shit like that but i don't know man like it, it, it's a Elon Musk, he's not the only one. Um, Steve, not Steve Jobs, uh, Bill Gates and a couple of the other ones uh, in, in Silicon Valley are all warning against this. They're like, you got to slow the fuck down and there's got to be a body of regulation put in place to keep this shit from happening. Of course, they put um, Kamala Harris because she's fucking knows all about goddamn computers as the czar of the technology. What the fuck? Get a programmer and put it in charge of that shit. Who is? Oh, oh, the. Uh, uh... Yeah, they put they put her like I was like, what do you know about fucking technology? I know how to order Uber with my phone. I think I'll be good. <laughs> hey, some people don't. To be fair, some people don't know how to use Uber. Uh, no, and, and by the way, just to clear up what I said, I, I I don't know if it sounded like that. I didn't go in there looking to write articles as me. I just went. What I meant was like people wouldn't be able to. It's not at a point where people be able to write like editorials yeah. and like like shit that's like meant for one person to write but if you want to get your homework done or if you want to write a clickbait top 10 article then uh people will be doing that for sure like yeah. uh, i'm pretty sure watch i'm pretty sure I, well i think it's gonna happen <laughs> for sure as long as there's like some kind of order involved i think google's gonna be replaced by ai like the next iteration of google will be an ai type of thing yeah, but it's one of those things too you don't want to be like hey I'm not using the goddamn internet. And then they could have made millions if they just would have like, you know, it's going to happen. So like lean into you know what? it, but it is scary at times. I'm always, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be hopeful for it though. I mean, yes, of course it's, you know, if it gets out of control, it could be awful and it could be, and it could cost, cost people jobs. It could lead to a lot of white flag uh, or false flags, white flags, false flags. Uh, die, I know, hope and, we don't get any more whites out of it. You know, we don't need any more whites. There's a lot now of this in this country. Me. But no, I mean, you know, the uh, false flag types of invasions, all that kind of crazy shit. But the cool thing about it is if, it, if it's used 
like right or or at least in a in a way that benefits. I'm 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 thinking low key here, but imagine putting it like I've mentioned about putting it in video games where it can be adaptive real time. You could put it into yeah. RPGs and like have the AI adapt to what your actual you know how you all like choose your own adventure type of stories like yeah. RPG where where you made a decision and the AI adapts on the fly to what you're doing. I think there's yeah. a, or like you know there's a lot of cool things the AI could do, but you just got to be really fucking careful with it. I think it'll bring a upon us a lot of great things and and with that just like social media will become a lot of bad things but you know i could be wrong and maybe it's going to suck all our dicks and then murder us um because yeah. as you know mm -hmm. if someone wants to suck your dick you're probably going to die i don't know if it was uh, tomo ogato or or someone else that said uh if don't worry about it, when the ai becomes self-aware it's going to see your porn and die like 100 yeah. percent, or it could just I'm decide to kill us all because they're like hey you motherfuckers are nasty as shit you guys do not deserve to inherit the planet so yeah goodbye you're like hey name me 27 presidents it's like i'm not doing shit for you all that you, you know what people last night you disgusting fuck <laughs> if you go on the average uh, the average american right now name 27 presidents most of them put george washington 26 times and then they'll <laughs> yeah. put either biden or trump <laughs> <laughs> stephen crow says finally called a live stream love you guys i love you too man i don't love that you're a patriots fan but i love you anyways i don't care you're a patriots fan i love you no matter what regardless it's like church just come on in we're gonna have fellowship <laughs> tell the truth jay tell the truth don't lie to him. I don't hate the Patriots. I don't. I don't really. The only fucking team that I've ever hated consistently in the NFL is I never liked. I know this is going to piss off some people. I just don't like them. I don't like the Browns because I think they're a boring ass fucking team, and I think their their fans are are kind of garbagey. I don't like the being. Uh, who? Uh, no, I coughed. I had a Did you say racist? Rapist? No. Rapist? No. You said that. Why the only one that, that. Who's a rapist? <laughs> who allegedly what happened i don't know what this is going on i didn't rape nobody <laughs> <laughs> not you you don't uh no fuck uh no they uh, well you can say as long as you put allegedly in front of it you could say yeah, it's whatever not, actually it's you got not you're not gonna get it's just uh yeah he had a bunch of masseuses Jerk. Oh, you know what? Let's oh, yeah, now, now I know you're talking about those. What? You yeah, know, the, the main he's a piece why, of shit. And well, they're like, me, we're gonna give you three hundred million dollars. Well, for the Browns it's though, I, I, the the main thing about the Browns, and I'm just gonna clarify this: it's not because of whatever. Uh, like I didn't even know that. I just remember that one year with Tim Couch. He used to be a quarterback for us, and he got fucking hurt. And there was their quarterback, and they booed. They they cheered actually. The fucking yeah. fans cheered as he was being like gurneyed off the goddamn field i'm like you pieces of shit is this a welcome to thunderdome bitch it's a football game <laughs> <laughs> angelo 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 the cisco kid which hey, is a, right. wonderful i saw a rapper the other day by the way is, is like chance never broke again <laughs> <I was laughs> you named yourself that yeah. uh you no know, i like angelo the cisco kid that sounds awesome it sounds like you could be to do the soundtrack for Donnie Brasco. So Angelo, like the Cisco Mike, kid, it, it sounds like a guy that got hired to take on a bounty in Tombstone. Or hey, we'll just get a Angelo, the Cisco kid. <laughs> or, yeah, or sell pan say. The Nabisco's, Angelo, the Cisco kid. Uh, so Nabisco doesn't make pancakes, do they? That's And this. cookies. Who makes the pancakes? I don't Bits. know. Nabisco. Uh, anyway, so my, like Mike and Jay, I'm ready to take this next step. When can you guys meet my parents? Uh, love you guys. Uh, We're ready too. Let's do it whenever you, you want. I'm, honestly, I haven't had to meet someone who I was having sex with parents since it's been like 20 years now. And that was a very awkward situation. Was not good at it. The dad was drunk on tequila, asked me what my ambitions were for his daughter. And I was just like, I'm in a band. And it did not go well. He passed out. His mother was very nice, though. And now we're in-laws and we're all best friends. But I will meet yeah. your parents because I haven't had to exercise that muscle in a while. Could you imagine, dude, by the way, like still dating and like having to meet parents for the first time dude, at I, your age well, with all the shit you've done on the internet? Well, before I met April, dude, like I, I it wasn't parents I was worried about me. Like I had to meet fucking kids. Oh, I didn't, I didn't even think about that, dude. That was the worst, dude. I met one of the, this one girl. I had like, uh, she had two kids. And I, I came over and I was like, you could be hey, my dude, daddy. Kidding. I'm like, fuck no, I'm just having sex with your mother. <laughs> uh, it, it was awkward, like dude. Shoot. It was weird. And, and then I think I, I didn't meet this. You know, he was a sweet kid and he and he came up. We were he was playing a video game, and then and then I was playing a game with him or something. And, so, and then she's like, That's so nice. He's not had a, a good father figure in his life. I was like, Oh my god. Ooh. I was like, anyway, it was nice knowing you though. It was really fun. I, I only laugh 
that's actually a very sad situation. The only reason I laugh is because I, <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about, but I know the plethora. No, of you would know cool. they were from. Uh, and, they they were from. They were from Shinoe. Oh yeah, anybody I could really into butt stuff. Pool, I'm like, <laughs> I can't believe you introduced your kids to him. Damn it! That's yeah, crazy. I had no choice because she was like, "You want to come over?" I'm like, "Yeah," and I didn't know. I didn't even. You I still, think I did. I didn't know they were have, home. You still, you still have to. You have parents still to meet, though. I don't envy you. Well, I don't envy yeah, you. You're like, I hope you haven't checked out the internet recently. Um, what do you do for a living? Here you go. Let me show you this video. Jay talking about. <laughs> no, they didn't know this kid. No, this kid was like, like eating his own boogers and shit. Like he wasn't really for ready for that conversation. <laughs> no, I mean, it is. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! No, that's a nightmare. Meeting the parents is the fucking worst. Well, I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be forty, and you're pushing it. So, you yeah. know, I I was actually telling you, like, imagine being, and I mean, there's nothing wrong. Uh, like, I'm not like shitting on it, but if you were single yeah. at forty years old, there it's just god damn unless you're charlie sheen you're gonna have a hell of a fucking time finding anything that's like worthwhile because yeah. i'm not saying you can't but you got all this std shit going on you got people with prior commitment or you know like they've got like politics. children they've got politics they've got all sorts of crazy ass shit you gotta contend with god damn i wouldn't hey. that's why i do maybe ai could just you know come up with a fucking fake ass girlfriend that's the thing. If you're single and you're old as fuck like we are, do not fear it. Do not fear mm -hmm. it because likely you've never used the tools the internet has to offer you. Like you, if you're old as fuck, you came from a time of having to walk up to people and talk to them personally. Now you get hit in the face with a baseball bat and called uh, 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 racist uh, and uh, um, like and 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 sexual and assaulty. Apologist. Yeah. So, but hey, use the tools, man. Use the tools. If you if you're if you're single and old as fuck like we are, hey, just go in there. Use the internet, man. You you'll be all right. It's gonna be fine. Yeah. And and if you meet parents, you can just walk in there and be like, you know what it is. I'm 40. You're 52. <laughs> You had your kid when you were 12. It's going to be fine. We got off topic, man. Mustafa Ahmadi says, I think Child's Play 2 is a great one. Best Chucky. Bite your fucking tongue. I mean, that's great, man. I'm really happy that you like that one a lot. That's a cool one. It's not one, a bad man. one. No, it's actually not bad. I actually did consider it. Uh, I'll just give you a spoiler alert. It's not on my 15. Um, but it's also, uh, this is a spoiler alert. I don't like Child's Play. I, I think that's been pretty well known throughout yeah. the universe. I, I like the first one, and then I don't really care for them after that. But Child's Play 2 wasn't bad. As, as far as child's play goes, yes, yeah, it wasn't bad. I didn't. Even, I thought that was eighties for some reason. I didn't even realize that was nineties. Um, but child, as far as child's play, yeah, not bad. All right, let's jump back in the list for a minute. We'll jump back in the super chats in a second. And uh, so number thirteen, unlucky number thirteen. What's it going to be for you? you well, fuck, that's a shit whore. I love it, dude. Uh, House on Haunted Hill. Oh, that's. A, oh, what did I do? Stop it! Don't fuck it up. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, House on Haunted Hill, dude. I love this fucking movie. It's got you give me my goddamn check now. It's got Chris Katana in a, in a great role. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Doctor, uh, the the bad guy, and he goes, the herky jerkiness. Uh, what the fuck's his name? Doctor. Uh, <laughs> um, Vatican. The name of the doctor. Doctor Vatican. Doctor Vatican. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, dude. It, like, yeah. and it's got it's got tribute to um, to um, what the goddamn is the guy the main guy's name. Vincent Price, not Vincent Price. It was it was a tribute to Vincent Price. Uh, no, I just so fuck. I anyway, but it, last well, night. yeah, it, well, it, either way, it's original. a great movie. It's not like it's not excession. Like for me, it was scary because of the herky jerky. I don't like the herky jerky ghosts. But Marilyn yeah. Manson, Sweet Dreams comes on. It's fucking badass when it starts writing its own letters and sending it out. There's something about it that's just very like super nineties. Like, do some of my like my favorite parts of that movie is like when the one girl like the girl that played Sonya Blade in Mortal Kombat goes downstairs to document so the shit and that thing like ri like I thought dude like this movie was fuck I, I did enjoy it. it got like a terrible rating people hated this movie in the 90s but I thought it was great dude it, I mean, it, like it was pure rock and roll ghost story in a house and I thought it was great that movie fucking rules. I love that movie. I'm right there with you, dude. And it actually, like, it's stupid as fuck and, like, it's fun as yeah, fuck. It's, but it's actually got scary moments in it. Like, it does. Like, and I, well, when they were like, when he was videotaping through it, and, like, uh, or no, when the Sonya Blade shit goes downstairs and you could see, she, like, lifts her camera up and looks through it. And then they, you could see the old ghost, like, doing the surgery. And then she puts it down and then she looks up again and that little ghost goes, ah, in her face. <laughs> and it's yeah. like a crackhead asking you for a dollar and you say no. It looked like yeah. that. Dude, there was, and then they all go. 
dude, I, I had that happen to me one night. One night we were hanging out uh, uh Angela and Krista's house. Remember mm-hmm. back when we were like fucking 17 or some shit? Yeah. And uh Justin Williams comes over and he's like, Hey, you want to buy a joint? And I was like, Yeah, I'll buy, <laughs> he's buy, a, yeah, I'll buy he's a joint. A smoked a joint went in the fuck i was like damn i was looking at the ceiling the ceiling started dripping i was like that's not what pot does i went in the bathroom looked at myself in the mirror and i was literally doing the thing the thing from that movie where they're like <laughs> that's what i could see in my face and i was like yeah. oh i've been and then it was that scene from training day where he uh he gets ethan hawk to smoke <laughs> pieces like damn i didn't know you like to get wet jake <laughs> he's like, yeah that's pcp that's angel dust yeah man uh, uh, yeah, look it's a good time i like i i feel like it's the universal studios of hollywood type Type of like movie you know what mm-hmm. i mean like it's just a good haunted house attraction ride or something yeah a hundred percent dude that's fucking that's a great movie so funny story like I, again i'll just i'll go ahead and it's in my honorable mentions it almost made my list as well because i love it so much but katie and i just sat down and watched the original last night with vincent price that's in it one too. fucking good i've never seen it before yeah i got really sleepy good. because like the that it's got one of those doors that like kind of puts you to bed you know yeah like eventually you're like, oh fuck, I'm gonna give into it, and then the dude, yeah. dick in your mouth. Yeah, like, but, well, like well, yeah, it's like saying you're not gay, and then the guy keeps sucking you off. Like, I'm, I'll just give into it. <laughs> yeah, eventually, like this guy's got short hair. I've just gotta right. be honest with myself. Uh, and it, he looks like the guy who's saying, "Come, my lady, come, come, my lady, be my, be my butterfly." butterfly. <laughs> Sugar, <baby. laughs> yeah, the dude from Crazy Town's going down, yeah. and you're like, I oh, you know what, I might be gay. What am I gonna do? Uh, but anyways, um, that was anyways. Welcome to Reading Rainbow. My number 13 is going to be, uh, oh, this is going to take shit. Oh, God, it's going to take shit no matter what you do. What? Fuck, I can't make my fingers type it. Don't make it Halloween. Halloween 6. You fucking piece of shit. <laughs> this is exactly what I meant by, like, there's some movies in this list that have no right to be here and others that are higher because they're just better. And Halloween six, dude, I couldn't put it. I could not put it in the fucking list, man. We watched it too many goddamn times. I got too much goddamn entertainment value out of it. It's the worst movie on this list. No, dude, I'm not saying I'm mad at you for that. I'm mad at you because uh, I have it so much higher on my fucking list. You piece <laughs> of crap. <laughs> no, I'm going to get all the scold. <laughs> Jesus Christ, my dog is just like fucking in my face. Uh, it's like, I can't believe it. Paul, this looks not law. Uh, no, I just, no, no, that was my thing. It was like justifying all the great movies, including the faculty and including House on Haunted, that I left off this list to put Halloween 6 on there. I just, I love it so much that I, I dude, how many times, it was the most rented movie. We broke of our the youth. tape. We broke the tape. Yeah, Hollywood Video was the only one that was ever in stock because it sucked, and we watched it over and over and over again. And it's it had a brutal Michael. It had the, it had the uh, yeah, dude, the metal Halloween version on it. Yeah, it had the weird ending. Paul fucking Rudd, Doctor Lewis yeah. was awesome in that. Amazing. Not dead, just very much retired. You know, yeah. fucking, I love it. I love. Not it. to mention the fact that Halloween Six is the, it, it. It literally sets the blueprint for the more violent Michael. That I and I, I know he'll never say it. Probably he didn't watch the movie. I don't know. Uh, but Rob Zombie, I feel like it was a blueprint for the, the more violent type of maniacal Michael that he used as, as uh, his Michael Myers. Because yeah. without Halloween 6, the curse of Michael Myers, you don't have this over the top aggressive, aggressive uh, is- kids got alligator blood, Michael Myers. <laughs> uh, you don't have that. Very, gr- very aggressive. Eat your audio. Uh, but no, I, um, yeah, dude, I can't say much. I can't say, but do Halloween 6. Like he's like an old family friend. I mean, he's got to be higher on my list. I've just known you too long, sir. Well, I respect it. I res- I respect that he's higher on your list. Absolutely, and it makes me feel good inside that that movie got its due. It, I may have wronged it, but yeah. Okay, so my number twelve is going to be um. Well, you know, I feel like it fits right into my number fourteen. It's disturbing behavior. I feel like it's oh. the superior version of the same type of movie, a uh, kind of anyway. Uh, high school type of situation uh james morston's incredible in it katie holmes actually does a really good job in a breakout type of role for her because a lot of people had known her as uh you know dawson's creek like i don't know pacey or dawson who knows i just wherever my vagina is um but she actually did a very good job of breaking out of that stereotype and uh, and and uh it actually featured a movie where he wasn't as annoying as he normally is is the kid that was uh played john connor in uh, terminator 3 um you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I know the guy. I know his face. I just can't think. He was also name. in Bully. That's an underrated movie, by the way, Bully. But um, uh, what the fuck's his name? Anyway, 
I just smelled you. Yeah, it's a very good movie. I think Disturbing Behavior is, is actually a, a, an underrated film. I feel like it's overshadowed by the faculty. The faculty had more of a budget, it feels like, overall. I feel like but the faculty also had a bigger cast of characters as well as more mainstream characters. And, Nick and Stahl. So, Nick Thanks Stahl, yeah. 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 Nick Stahl, there it is. But, yeah, dude, overall, I, I think Disturbing Behavior is actually on point because we were actually discussing about technology and how it can be abused and, and used in a <laughs> nefarious way. AI and like doing, you know, there's been talks about putting a microchip in people's heads to be able to connect to the phone and shit like that. Elon Musk talked about shit like that. I don't know. It like it feels like disturbing behavior is becoming disturbingly real. At one point, maybe it would be real. You can reprogram or, your fucking kids. Hey, she's being a fucking bitch. Reprogram her. Or if you watch the uh McDonough or the Murthal Murthal, did you have you guys watched that true crime thing on the Mur Murthal? Mur Mur McDonough, what the fuck are their names? Murdoch. The Murdochs in South Carolina, the Low Country murders mm -hmm. or whatever the fuck. Oh, it's kind of like that. Oh yeah, like, yeah. I watched so the, fucking rich. The, they yeah, get away yeah. With whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, April watched the trial. I I know that the guy was a piece of shit and the son. There was all sorts of weird shit going on there. But yeah, at the same time, I, I I James Marston. I you, and I know this might be controversial. I think he's a better protagonist than uh, what's his name from the faculty. Uh. uh I keep on forgetting. Comb your hair. Uh, Josh Hartnett. Josh Hartnett. I, I, I do. I think James Morrison's a, a better protagonist. James Morrison is. Because I feel like he's more relatable. Movie. First off, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, he's not a drug dealer and he's not trying to get everybody to snort coke out of a fucking pin. Guaranteed <laughs> <laughs> to jock you up. Yeah. Does it, 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 like, you know what? When you watch disturbing behavior, does it not feel like it could be, it could have been wrote by Stephen King? It's got that like small town feel vibe. to it. Sure. Yeah, I get that vibe from it for sure. I, I and I have to go back and watch it. I watched it one time, and that's when you and I reviewed it. So I need to do a back and check. All I know is they had a great song on that soundtrack, The Flies. Got you, yeah, I want good. you. It's weird, uh, because you and uh you and April love the faculty more than disturbing behavior, and Katie and I actually like disturbing behavior better, better than the faculty. Yeah. Um I, it's a fucking i need to watch it again i only watched that once i need to watch it again katie holmes needs to get out of show business though what is she she doing? was scarred by tom cruise she's having a hard time adjusting <laughs> oh i didn't mean to do that what did i do uh i'm just kidding katie holmes has her place in the world she does good things sometimes. she gave I birth imagine. to her daughter in silence based on the scientology doctrine that's impressive <laughs> like, like, that probably took well, a lot out of her <laughs> I can't imagine. God, I, that's one of those things. It's like, God, I hope that's not fucking true. I didn't mm -hmm. hear that Tom Cruise was interested in, and he is he is aggressively pursuing Shakira. Tom Cruise is right now, and I'm like, she better uh, shake them hips back to wherever she's from. <laughs> she needs like, to get away. Well, welcome to the club, buddy. Um, so okay, number twelve for me is going to be I like men in the shower. Uh, no, it's going to be. I have a feeling this is going to be on your list too. It's going to be Stir of Echoes. Oh. God, it's Don't so close it. to mine. Don't spoil it. <laughs> it's so close. Uh, uh, <laughs> Sir, Sir Beckles, man, a fucking banger, underrated, forever underrated, because it just, it's not, it's not in your face. It's not like, ooh, I'm going to be scary or anything. Yeah. Like, it was just so fucking like, it's the quiet dude at the party who's just really chill to hang out with, but like a really <laughs> yeah. good time. Yeah. You know, like Kevin Big coming there, he's a fucking, uh, I've got that great line in the movie uh, when he's like, he was like, I don't know. I just, I thought it'd be something more than this, you know? It's like that great middle-aged dude movie. He was in a band, and now he has all these friends, and they're hanging out, and it's got such a good mm -hmm. character buildup, and then kids start going missing, and then there's some supernatural shit, and there's some fucked-up teenagers. And then he goes crazy, starts digging a hole in his backyard. He's really thirsty. No, uh, dude, just, like, he like he lets that, that, that bitch roots around in his head. Like, that's shit. Like, I feel like yeah. that's more real. Like, I'm not saying, okay, first off, you have to believe in the paranormal. But uh, which I do, but I, like I feel like that would be more realistic. Like someone opening up the brain, like that that girl that fucks with his brain. That, remember, he gets drunk. He's like, I don't believe in this shit. And then he's like, and she's like, okay, yeah, I want you to Aubrey open Plaza. your mind. Like she's goddamn Cleo from the one eight hundred numbers. And then You're he can the see theater. that shit. Like, dude, I was like, I, I like, I swear to God, I would never. I don't even want to go to a like any type of hypnotist because if they were like, I need you to keep an open mind and then see shit. I won't do it. I would never do that. But no, I mean, I the need fact to quit smoking. I will but not. But Kevin Bacon, no. dude, in that movie, that movie is so fucking underrated. I know everyone licks the ass of the sixth sense. And again, it's very much the same way as disturbing behavior. Disturbing behavior was overshadowed by the faculty. 
Stir of Echoes was overshadowed by The Sixth Sense. Mm -hmm. Even though The Sixth Sense, in my opinion, was probably a little bit of a superior movie, Stir of Echoes never gets talked about. It feels like a direct-to-video movie, but I'm pretty sure it came out in theaters, right? It did. Uh, no, yeah, Stir of Echoes came out in theaters, but I'm saying, like, Stir of Echoes is, like, I feel like it's got, you know, like, like Sixth Sense is great, and, and, it, and it gets you warmed up, and Stir of Echoes is, like, is like the moment where you're, like, we're going to really fuck with you. We're going to really yeah. fuck with you now. Like, if you were going through a haunted house, you went through, like, the kind of, like, medium ones, and now yeah. you're going into the ones where it's psychological. Yeah, but they keep kind of like a law and order vibe throughout the movie, so it never goes like full horror territory, like full tilt, like this is going to scare you. You don't show this to somebody going like, this is going to scare you. You just show it yeah. to somebody you're like, this is going to be a good fucking time. Like, maybe, I just watch this. It with, I, maybe I identified it with it more because the, the, the main guy in it, like Kevin Bacon, is like an everyday dude. You could just be like, you know, you're like living your life. You're just doing things. You're hanging out. You're partying with your neighbors. And then the next yeah. thing you know, you're like trying to solve a murder of a fucking crazy ass bitch ghost that keeps yelling at you when you sit down on her plastic fucking covered couch. It's like, just what's going thing. on? It might be the liar liar of horror movies, whereas like it's just so easy to watch. Like mm -hmm. it's just, dude, you throw this thing on and you're just into it. You're into the character vibes and like it's a great fucking story and it's got great pacing and it's got great acting in it. Yeah, I love it. amazing. Man. It's a good yeah. one. Hey, let's pop in some super chitties real quick before we take a pee pee because I know your dick be burning. Mm -hmm. That dick is burning. By the way, Mike did give me his uh burning tiger or whatever the fuck it's called for I where I have a pinch uh, tiger's bomb. Tiger's bomb. Yeah. Tiger's bomb. Uh, like it's not, it's like, look, look at that shit. Uh it, it like it doesn't um I feel like that guy, uh, I feel like Rob Schneider and uh I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Mike says like hi. <laughs> he goes, hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh but uh yeah I, I put some on it actually works for a little bit but it doesn't penetrate as much as i wish it did uh, well story of our life buddy uh, our wife i know, that's, I know that's what every girl that we've ever known said but uh i i <laughs> but i'm saying like i put it on it, it worked for like a second and then it was like shit it just didn't get deep enough and again every girl we've ever met but <laughs> like at first it seems like it's okay and then that, like that, well that's that's fucking karma that's i woke up dissatisfied he had a cigarette in his mouth half asleep so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dude i hurt myself too i fucking uh look at this shit yeah i fucking i got i got the bruise i got the fucking cut i got the what you do did you, go, did you try to go skateboarding no i fisted a rhino um, oh that'll do it no. <laughs> <laughs> i do no i had a midlife crisis and tried skateboarding no i uh, i was playing volleyball and it was yeah. a, it was the championship and a ball went over here and i dove for it may have had a couple of races in me but yeah. i dove for it and like hit it and then landed and there's this like it comes up to about like here like about waist high and there's a crowd on the other side of it and it comes up and it's like plyboard and i just fucking wonked right into that fucking thing and everybody goes it was one of those things you do you fucking hurt yourself because you heard everybody in the audience go oh yeah. <laughs> and i was like oh, yeah, i actually would have loved to, i would have loved to watch that just because i'm like mike's acting like he's goddamn 1996 kentucky wildcats playing for a championship no, just a that motherfucker is ron mercer oh. <laughs> yeah no it did well I, I would say it didn't look cool because like but I, I did i was like just tell me it looked cool they're like yeah, yeah. it did and they're probably like no it didn't but yeah no i fucked i should have. everybody's like oh my god you're bleeding and i was like it's got sand were you were you waiting for the dive were you hoping it was like in your mind you were thinking it's slow-mo i was like playing playing, playing with, the, with boys. the boys <laughs> yeah that's totally what it was yeah i, know, I had it. no idea the the wall was there so like i heard somebody go damn man it's not worth it i was like i didn't fucking know the wall was there bro <laughs> I would have done Dude, that. Dude, at least you did. I, it reminds me back when uh, Yahoo, like I remember Yahoo was like still kind of newish, and I was playing. I was playing pool. You guys remember that free to play game on Yahoo? You could play Yahoo Pool. I was just playing that as a you know whatever. It was I was bored, and I you could play against Yahoo other people. Ruled. Yeah, I loved it, dude. I was playing against this random guy, and then uh, he got. He, I started winning, and he got mad as fuck, and he was like. <laughs> I made a really shitty like he was like that was luck or whatever he like he was it was it was texting on the screen he was like that was luck I was like okay <laughs> and then uh and then I I made a I made some kind of really obvious mistake I didn't care I was like barely doing it and he was like ha ha amateur I see and then he like <laughs> he, like proceeded to kick my ass and then he was like I was like uh yeah good game man he was like oh it really sucks that I couldn't have a formidable opponent opponent 
And I'm like, uh, yeah, well, it's Yahoo Pool, man. I was like, I don't take this shit seriously. He's like, if you don't take this seriously, you'll never take anything in your life seriously. I'm like, what yeah, the I, fuck? I, 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 I was I totally like, this guy was like a fucking, uh, you know, the uh, Karate Kid instructor on Yahoo I, Pool. I only hope that the My 600 Pound Life crew that was filming him in that moment captured that all on film so that they could put that in the show <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, okay, let me get caught back up here. Um, what we're trying to say, guys, is that we're playing hurt. That's the point. We're old, we're crusty, and we're always in. I was there for the first, uh, we were there for the doll up internet. Yeah. That's how old we are. If you see us, it means we're playing hurt. I was there when we, you used to get in the mail free AOL. You could put this in and get like for like for a few hours free <laughs> AOL on a CD ROM. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nicholas Weir says, so Mike, we know what your number one is. Hey guys, don't fucking tell me about business devil woman. All right. Know. My number one could be anything. My number one could be fucking. Oh, I know. Yeah. Day, no, oh yeah. Nigger. You don't Shut know. Shut the fuck up. Is. Don't you're pretend. As, uh, you're you're as obvious as Courtney Love looking to shoot Kurt Cobain in the head with a goddamn shotgun after she gets drunk. <laughs> well, she got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> she got away uh, with it. So that's it. <laughs> I'll do it. I'm just trying to figure out what Jay's is going to be. Keep rocking. Hey, Stop trying to rate me. I'm a human being. And you know, I never like actually uh, when I looked at the uh, the list overall, uh, it, like that was the, the the one I have is number one. It never it, it, like I, I my eyes were drawn to it. That's my number one. I actually went like in the other way. Like I know that like we usually go from 15 down, but I actually went number one up. Jay's number one is Night of the Living Dead. Is that what you meant? No, I I, I missed how something. we always okay how we usually do like. Uh, bottom down like 15, yeah 15 to yeah. one yeah that's yeah. what i'm talking yeah, about i'm not jail uh oh. but no i went I, like how i made my list was i went to number one what my, my number one was gonna be and then oh i, I did too i did the same thing i did the same thing but i've done it before where i've gone backward because i'm like what's the worst movie out of this whole list i've comprised hey, you ever got naked and ran backwards through a cornfield yep it hurts <laughs> my ass made popcorn <laughs> pop 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 hey girl you hungry fuck you brad ferguson says what's up guys was in a work meeting so i'm a little late but some good news i just bought my first hat hey all hey! right brandon good job man big that's event. a big accomplishment right there man good Huge for you event, brandon uh happy for you man yeah that's a that's a big deal it's not easy to buy a fucking house <laughs> it's just scary happy for you man that's awesome uh hey take a drink for brandon right now yep the only thing closer to that is, hey, that's nice. That's a nice red cup you got there. What what were you drinking? Just <laughs> European just. I mean, we're already skirting on YouTube's edge crack anyway. So it's if a they sprite. ever see you know what's weird is like that, isn't that stupid, by the you way? You just gotta cover the label. Yeah, Fine. That's true. I'm gonna start yeah. doing that. I don't like drinking out of these fucking cups. Just cover the label. This is a yeah. sprite. But isn't that dumb though? That they'll oh, shit. That, that... all right, you're right. <laughs> what? I didn't cover the label. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why? Well, I, I just it's think that's so alcoholic. dumb. They will crack on your ass if you yeah, fucking have you. a beer or anything. Yeah, but it's it's totally okay to show like I don't know. It's just so stupid. It's so dumb. Norse standard. Chuck the Third says, "Excited to meet you guys at Scarefest. Maybe we can go grab some burrows and talk some movies." Take care, my dudes. Excited to hear what to that Tom Savini will be there too. Oh, oh yeah, shit. He's gonna be the yeah, only man. guy there uh, has nicer abs than me. <laughs> Tom Savini is a, a cool guy, man. Uh, Tom Savini is actually a very in shape dude. At, like, what is he, 70 years old? That no, motherfucker looks ass. like he's 50 years old. Yeah, real ones. Not yeah, like big man. Really good looking guy. Uh, awesome FX artist. I would love, I actually would love to talk to Tom Savini. I've heard bad and good things about meeting him. So I hope, hopefully, I get him on the good days. <laughs> he's not on his period if yeah. I meet him. But uh, yeah, we'll hang out and drink some non Bud Light and, and talk movies. <laughs> Show us your <laughs> pew, pew, love gun. Our our booth's gonna be sponsored by Bud Light. Uh, I don't I don't know if you know that. Yeah, there's a there, there's gonna be a flamingo behind us with its yeah. wings open. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um uh no, excited to meet you too, Norris. I you know, we I don't know if we'll have time to have beers or whatever, but we'll be drinking beers at our booth. So just come over with your beer in hand and we will cheers and have beers yeah, together. Um, if we get a yeah. chance to have beers otherwise. We're all for it, <laughs> but I think we're gonna. I think this year we're gonna be smart. We're gonna bring it our shit in a cooler. Yeah, I saw people doing that. And I was like, "What oh, no. the fuck? We're paying seven dollars like, for goddamn yeah, dude. Over here. We could have saved like eighty bucks." Yeah, yeah, and I saw other people with their cooler. And I was like, "God damn it!" 
Blake Huggins, what's up, man? Says, what's up, dudes? I need advice on which editing software hashtags or I'd be sorry, hashtag slash site I should use to make YouTube videos. I usually use iMovie, but I want to upgrade. Thanks. I'm actually, Jay, the wrong person to ask about this because I still use fucking movie studio, Sony movie studio, not Vegas, but the poor person version of Vegas. Did you, you, did you get pirate that $20. shit? Dude, you bought it. No. Well, I tried to pirate Vegas like 20 years ago and it didn't work. <laughs> you should have said that. It you should have said that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long time ago. No, I still use Movie Studio and so, there's like no updates for it or whatever, but I'm comfortable with it. It knows me. I know it. I'm scared to move up. I should. At the level that we're at, I should be using a way fancier editing. Sony suite. Vegas? Uh, it's Sony Vegas, but it's like, it's like, isn't it like 60 bucks a year? No, it's like the re. No, you don't have to pay yearly for. It. I pay fifty oh. bucks for it once. I own it. It's like the VR Troopers to Power Rangers. It's the Reebok to Nike. It's the shitty version of Vegas, but I still use like version fourteen from like seventeen years and four oh. scores ago. I'm just comfortable with it. So don't do what I do. Get comfortable. Uh, that's the advice I give you, Blake. Get comfortable with the hardest fucking one that you can afford. And then once you get comfortable with it, as hard as it is, you'll know your shit and you'll be good to go for the future. Don't be like sure. me. Don't be like me. Uh, the Yeager bomb says, is it true that Jason Momoa is no longer Aquaman and is now Lobo? Are we finally getting Lobo? My vote for game. J my vote is for James Gunn to direct. You gotta read it right. Are we finally getting Lobo? My vote for James ah! Gunn. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if that's true or not, but that would make total sense. Cause Jason Momoa does look like Lobo more so than Aquaman. And if James Gunn directed that, that would be an awesome, like if you don't know who Lobo is, Mike, He's like the, the DC equivalent. I know of, who Lobo is. I do wrote you? the second episode of Lobo. Oh, yeah. What's it about? Los Lobos. It's a it's a, a Mexican band. About earlobes. <laughs> <laughs> it's about uh, doctors that work on earlobes. Uh, yeah, but no, uh, Red Omega 7. Well, he's basically the DC equivalent of Wolverine. He, he's got a little bit more attitude, though. He's a, he's like an intergalactic bounty hunter. Do Very much James Gunn uh driven type of story you're absolutely right james gunn would be the perfect fit for the direction uh and as far as momoa being lobo actually him being uh lobo makes more sense than he was as aquaman like he's kind of the lobo characters kind of got like i don't give a fuck type of attitude just soaring through space like doing bounties yeah he yeah and he listens to charleston choo, chicka, chicka, chicka. yeah and then he like writes rap songs on a planet somewhere and it releases it <laughs> That'd be better than fucking Aquaman. <laughs> hey, do you want to pee first, or do you? Yeah, want to I gotta go. First? I gotta go back. All yeah, right, go All pee. Right. I peed first last time. All right, I'll be back. All right, and when Jay gets back, we'll continue the list after I take my pee pee break. You fucking let me pee. Can can I pee? Can a dude pee? Six six six. Six, six, six says, I just want to say, even though Mike J look like Dane Cook and Charlie Day's evil ass little cousins from Kentucky, I still love these guys. You know, I used to get the Dane Cook thing a lot when he was popular and then nobody knew who he was because uh, he wasn't popular anymore. I used to get that a lot because I, I, my hair was a little bit bigger, a little bit more, you know, whatever. I, and I didn't mind because I used to love Dane Cook, man. Um, Vicious Circle is one of the greatest comedy standups of all time. And it may not hold up that well, but at the time, that shit fucking ruled. And I, for some reason, we all decided we hated Dane Cook. It was one of those, like, they build you up until they break you down. By the way, I watched Air this week on Amazon. You guys got to watch that shit. That's a great movie. They tell him that, too. They're like, they're going to build you up, and then they're going to break you down, because that's what we do here. But um, I love Dane Cook. And Jay does look like Charlie Day. There's no fucking doubt about it. Thanks, 666. Mike Park says, I don't know why they're rebooting Hellboy again, especially after David Harbour's movie flopped. Why couldn't they bring back Ron Perlman? Dude, I don't get Hellboy. I don't understand it. I don't get it at all. It's just like a, it's a visual thing for me. Like there's some things you see and they just don't connect with your mind, body, and soul. And everything I've seen from Hellboy, I've never been a Ron Perlman guy. I'm just like, your face is just too big. No offense to him. He's done a great job with it, but there's some things for other people and, and, and not for others. I've never been a Hellboy dude, so I don't get it either. There's so many more cool fucking things you could do. I don't understand Hellboy. I don't understand uh, Fast and Furious either. Who the fuck goes to see those movies? I don't get it. Uh, Joe Valentine says, what does Loomis and Chalice think of Tremors? We'll jump back to that one. Joe. When Jay's back in here for show, Christopher Sampson, I want to talk to Sampson. Fly me to the moon with that bitch, Alice Crampson. Says, hey, guys, I hope you're well. Thank you very much for that super generous super chat, my friend. We appreciate it. Said, do you think Wyatt Russell could remake any of his father's Kurt 
uh, any of his father Kurt's movies. I'd love to see Big Trouble in Little China. We talked about this a little bit. Jay, I can tell you, does not like the idea. He's just not like the, I don't know why I said it like that, but he does not like the idea of Wyatt Russell doing specifically um, Snake Plissken at all uh because we talked about that a couple streams ago i don't know like it's one of those things i when i look at it and i look at what white russell does and i look at kurt russell i'm like you're no sharon stone you know what i mean it's like and that's okay like you don't have to be as great as your dad was who the fuck is as cool as kurt russell fucking nobody i'm not that's not a knock to that guy he could have a great acting career he's already done more in hollywood than me and 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 the 27 different me's in multiple dimensions if i even try to be an actor would ever get to so i'm not knocking the guy but Kurt Russell's a special, special, one-of-a-kind type of thing. I would watch it, though. I would like to see it, and when I watch it, I would root for him. I would root for fucking White Russell to be as cool as Kurt Russell was, because why not? Because then you get a twofer. I don't see it, but, I mean, shit, man. Like, you know, uh, it's just like anybody. Like, it's it's just because it's their son or their dad, and they look alike. Doesn't mean they can pull off that exact swag. That guy had different life experiences. He went through a whole different life than his son did, you know? So I don't know. I hope so, dude. I really hope so. And I'd like to, I, if they, if they, if they cast him, I'd be like, let's give this motherfucker a shot. Here we go. That's what I'll say. I fucking hope so. I hope so. Derek, you, oh no, it's not the Derek that I hate. It's, 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 it's nice Derek. He says, you guys are hilarious. Really enjoy your content. What's your favorite cereal? Fuck. That's a good question. I'll ask Jay his when he comes back as well. My favorite cereal. I don't eat cereal anymore because I'm so fucking old. If I just eat cereal, it just goes straight to my fat face. Um, but I can tell you this, uh, fucking what's the best cereal, man. The best cereal frosted flakes is not it. It's not good enough. Lucky charms. It gets like, it makes your teeth feel fuzzy. Uh, the best all time greatest fucking cereal ever tasted. It's not, not fruity pebbles because they get so, they get so soggy so fast. Uh, I do love frosted mini wheats, but that's not greatest of all time territory. Fuck me. That's actually a way harder question than I was prepared for. And I know I'm missing a great goddamn cereal. Oh, God, this is hurting my asshole. Oh, shit. There is no right answer. Banana nut crunch. That's good. <laughs> Fuck. What's the best cereal of all time? Honeycomb. Honeycomb. What the fuck? Why do I ask? Don't listen to women. I don't. Jesus Christ, that's tough. Yeah. Awful answer. Oh yeah, disgusting. I want a divorce. Thank God, dude. Jay, what's the what's the greatest cereal of all time? She said, "Thank God." By the way, uh, greatest cereal of all time. Yeah, I'm having a hard time. I'm missing a great one. Um, <laughs> it sounds like you're pooping in a toilet, like straight yeah. diarrhea. That's why it sounds like sometimes. <laughs> I, um, Fruity Pebbles. I said pretty print, but they get so milky or they get so soggy, you know? I love Fruity Pebbles, man. Captain Crunch is a good one. Captain Crunch is a good one. I sit okay, I got it. I got it. I have it. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. That's my answer. Um stop shitting in the toilet. <laughs> that's what I think about it. Yeah, Cinnamon Toast Crunch is my fucking answer, dude. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is what I'm going with. I love that shit. Get off my desk, Hella, you fucking piece of shit. Um, okay, that's a great question, Derek, and we appreciate you, man, very, very much. Uh, thank you for fucking follow us on Twitter because I have to. Think uh, you could that. literally, you could probably do that. You could probably do like, a, we could probably do an hour video on ranking yeah. cereals. So, there, there's something in my brain I just can't go to. I just can't. I can't get to in my brain um, before I take my pee pee time. Special pee pee time. Pops so was I, gross. I don't know. I, I know that some people love pops, and I fucking hated that cereal. I like pops, but it's not. It's not I don't no, it, it like if your mom pops, like you like it was like fruity pebbles or cinnamon toast crunch yeah. or even Lucky Charms, and then she bought fucking pops. So you might as well buy goddamn Rice Krispies, like regular Rice Krispies. I actually thought it was like a fancy day in the whole house when we got pops. It's like, oh, you brought the name brand shit because pops didn't really have like a like a generic version. You so could get. fucking it was nasty. Um, Rice Krispies were good if you fucking covered that shit. Honey Nut Cheerios. That's all right. Tough. To that's eat. all right. Pretty but good. that's definitely like that's a hangover cereal. Smacks suck shit. Um, mm. Smacks suck shit. Just, I like the I like the uh, the real Ghostbusters cereal. 
back in when it when it came out. And the turtle cereal actually was really good too. Yeah. I don't know who the fuck spawned, who like it was a Kellogg's maybe. Yeah, but when they would do that, they would never really create a brand new cereal. They would just kind of be like, hey, this is the Lucky Charms version of fucking you know like. I don't know. Yeah, but there was something like I think the ghost, the real Ghostbuster cereal had a unique flavor to it, and so did the turtle, the the uh, the turtle cereal. I don't know. Oreo cereal is not bad, not terrible, but I'm not a chocolate cereal dude. I don't like the way it turns the water poopy or the milk poopy brown. Um, Joe Valentine, uh, I'll, I'll do this real quick. Uh, what did Loomis and Chalice think of Tremors? Uh, Tremors is a good movie about a couple guys who just live in the uh, they live in the desert and uh, they're just they're trying to get some lady friends and uh, these goddamn worms come around, but it just makes them they make them more attractive to the females and uh i would have slept seven to ten percent of the men and 40 to 60 percent of the women in trimmers and uh probably would have fucked one of the one of the graboids yeah <clears throat> movie was about uh two out of work landscapers and big giant wieners chasing him yeah. with mouths throughout the desert stupid dumb movie didn't like it Seven out of ten. Two out of ten. Go get a job. Oh, I gotta pee. I'm gonna go pee, Jay. We're at 8 25 p.m. with Christopher oh. Sampson. No, I, I answered that, but by the way, how do you feel about uh Wyatt Russell doing Big Trouble in Little China as his dad, Kurt Russell? Just real quick. Okay. Um uh, 8 20, who was it? No, oh, I was just asking you that one. Uh, I covered that one. That was at 8 25. But we are currently at sexy fucking time. So we're currently at 8.28 p.m. with William. Why? Give me one second. Let me get down there to it. I'll get inside you. Okay, hold on. Um, oh, it hurts. Eight. Uh, okay, I got you. Okay, mm -hmm. I found it. Okay. But before you answer William, what do you think about Wyatt Russell playing Big Trouble Little China? Type I role. I don't like I, I feel like that movie shouldn't be remade to be honest I, I I don't think that that movie should be remade. However, if they were going to cast anybody, I feel like uh, the legacy character, which in this case literally Kurt Russell's son, would be a good choice. Wyatt Russell, I don't know a lot of what he's been in. I know that he was U.S. agent in the uh, the the Disney Plus series. He might have been in, uh, something else, but. Um, and when I say that he was U.S. agent, he was a character in the Winners. What was it? The Winter Soldier and the Falcon, or whatever the fuck, on Disney Plus. I just don't. I feel like that movie is perfect. I really don't feel it needs to be remade, even though I'm sure it will be. So if they were going to remake it, I think Wyatt Russell is fine. Um, William, thank you so much. Says, "Hey guys, I don't know if y'all have talked about this yet, but are you going to review the new Boogeyman movie coming out? Much love, you guys are great. Thanks, man." Um, I don't know if I'm interested in reviewing something about someone eating boogers all the time. <laughs> so stupid. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe. I mean, it's possible that we we could uh, review it. Um, the last Boogeyman movie I saw, or the Boogeyman, was with that one guy that looked like Keanu Reeves' <laughs> Christian cousin from uh, Seventh Heaven that played in it. Huh? Barry Watson. Huh? Barry Watson. Yes. Uh, Barry Watson. That's his name. Yeah. Holy shit! He sounds like an insurance sells, like an insurance agent. Like I didn't. Barry Watson is the most fucking. Uh, you you would think you change his name. Are you sure? That's his name. God damn, that's weird. Anyway, um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, if it's good, I'll I'll, I'll check it out for sure. Uh, DJ Dream Int. I'm, I'm I'm assuming it's DJ Dream Entertainment which is sexy. That's a hot ass name. That sounds like a great porn company, to be honest with you. Um, in Waikiki sipping on my ties with the wife, with my ties, my ties. Yes. With the wife in Waikiki sent you a super chat on the honeymoon, sending another on the one year and cheers boys. God damn you, Michael. God damn you, Michael. Um, thank you, man. That's awesome. Uh, you're in Waikiki. Where the fuck is that? Where the fuck is Waikiki? It's in Hawaii. That's what she said. I don't know. Is it? That sounds like a Hawaiian name, though. Well, Kiki, give me a Mai Tai. That sounds cool, man. But thank you so much. I hope you're having a great uh, a time. And, and thank you so much for hanging out with us this evening. That's awesome. Uh, let's just continue on down here. 
Uh, Eduardo Santiago says, hello, Wham Fam. Mike, Jay, stay golden. Now, that is the kind of shit that a superhero would say, like, after he swooped in, rescued your ass, and then he was like, stay golden. And then he flew away. Eduardo Santiago is a great, awesome man. I love that guy. And thank you so much, Eduardo. Um, Inky the Alien says, I'm back again with my TCM Next Gen Propaganda. Sorry, not sorry, but it's my number one. It's one of my favorite movies ever next to Repo the Genetic Opera. Well, I would say you need to see more movies. You've only been on this planet for a short time, Inky. But, you know, more power to you. But that's fine. That's fine. I know Mike actually likes The Next Gen, right? I can't stand that piece of hot poopy. But if you liked it, that's cool. I can't, dude. I tried. I tried really to enjoy that movie, and I just can't stew it. I can't. Jack Hunter, wow, thank you so much, says, uh, when the fuck are you guys going to review the Scream fan film, Stab 1 and 2? I've been waiting. Well, you know what, man? I don't know. I don't, I, I'm not a huge Scream fan, to be honest with you. Uh, I like Scream 1. Scream 2 is okay. Scream 3 is a big donkey dick in the desert that no one's watered. Scream 4 is the starving child that no one will ever feed. And Scream 5 is decent. It's a recovery. And Scream 6 is like, yeah, well, you know, we've had a good couple of uh, times in a relationship. I will do it if Mike wants to, but I'm not like... But yeah, at some point we'll do it. By the way, I think there, there's a lot of fan films that are actually well well done and better than the actual movies that come out. So maybe it's going to be awesome. We'll see. Um, continuing, continuing. Uh, God damn. Why did they change this? Uh, the suit, by the way, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Um, they've, they've changed these super chats the way they're highlighted. Um, Ch uh, child of the corn says better nineties, Arnold. Uh, okay. Better nineties, Arnold comedic psychic, Danny Madigan from the last action hero or Albert, AKA Tom Arnold from true lies, both utter classics and all time faves. Um, Man, Danny Madigan was fun. I did enjoy him a lot. I thought he was really cool in The Last Action Hero, and I think Last Action Hero is an underrated gem. But I, I got to go with Tom Arnold from True Lies. I just think that the comedic uh, duo performance that they both had off each other was was awesome. I really did enjoy it, and I dug it. Um, and Tom Arnold is like the regular, everyday kind of dude that you, you would never see as as the uh, like a CIA operative. And like he's hanging out with Arnold and he's doing all these like crazy things, and but he's like still concerned with himself. Like, I remember that one that the, the fun one of the funniest scenes in True Lies is when the guy shoots at the uh, it was like a telephone pole or a light pole, and he's like he, he somehow ducks behind it and he's like and he checks all the vitals, which is his, his tits, his his wiener, and like his butt. He, for some reason, he checked his butthole too. I guess it just in case the bullet had gone through his wiener hole and exited. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 not, uh, it's Tom Arnold. I think a hundred percent for me. Um, I'm probably going to fuck your name up and I'm sorry, but thank you so much. Uh, Treffle admit says, hello, beautiful people of the night. Just joined the Patreon and psyched to be here since we're on the nineties horror. The ring ruined me as a kid. Yes. Um, and, and, and hey, man, welcome, and thank you so much for your support. Uh, I Well, I think, you, you, did the ring come out in the 90s, or did the ring goo come out in the 90s? Because I'm pretty sure the ring didn't come out in the 90s. I think ring was more of a, the ring itself, as we know, it was Sarah, uh, that was, uh, 2000s. No, yeah, that was 2000, not Sarah Michelle Gellar, that was The Grudge. Yeah, it was 2000, so ring goo was a fucking crazy-ass movie, I'm sure. I've never watched it because the ring fucked me up enough. The American version, I never, I never went back and did that double- that double scoop of ice cream. I don't want that. <laughs> well, none of the sequels to the ring were any good either, but yeah, that was two thousands. Yeah, okay. uh, what time so, stamp are you at? You uh, 851. 851. Uh, even though we got, we did get a question earlier. Um, someone was like, when the fuck? And they, they, they used all caps. So they were, they were talking. They was like, when the fuck are we going to review the scream? fan films stab one and two and and i was like you're the person to talk to because i'm not a huge screen oh, fan Jack. but if we that's yeah i was at page so so yeah it's a it's a patreon request for you that we got we're gonna we're gonna jack that, that oh it is i didn't even know that like i just said yeah. no 
no, it's, it's a bit. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Don't well, I didn't say no. I just said if Mike it's wants fine. to, yeah, sure, I'll do it. It's like your girlfriend wants to go to the fucking, <laughs> like, uh, like the, the fucking planetarium. I don't really want to go, <laughs> but I'll go. <laughs> it's on the list, my friend. No worries. No worries at all. Um, okay, let's jump back into the list for a second here and touch ourselves late into the night. Jay, what is your number 11, you piece of shit? I hope you fucking get diarrhea. Yeah, it's going to probably happen soon. I feel like it's coming on. Uh, mm -hmm. My number 11 is going to be Event Horizon. Oh, that's a good one. I love Event Horizon, man. Like, And honestly, it almost made a higher... Uh, higher tier on my list um i just had to stop myself from getting carried away it was like hey you smoked one joint don't all of a sudden start doing cocaine calm down <laughs> you, it's not a gateway drug but i but i love event horizon i feel like it's it's a movie that's underrated as fuck i don't feel like people talk about it at all i feel like it's got a great cast i mean Lawrence fishburne is amazing in this film as well as the antagonist of the film as well which is um jurassic park alumni Mouth of Madness, Mr. Sam uh, Neil. Neil. Yeah. I always I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I want to say no, I didn't say maybe that. I want to say Sam Raimi because of the fucking I don't know. But He'd have Sam been good Neil, Kruger, by the way. Sam yes, Neil he would be really good. He would actually be a good pinhead. He's a little short, but he could do a good, good pinhead too. But uh yes, Sam Neil is in, incredible in this as well. I love the synopsis, I love the idea. It's a haunted house in space, and I feel like that's so terrifying. The fact that it's 20 what I think the movie takes place in 2047 or 2087 or something like that. The event horizon, a, an experimental spaceship suddenly goes missing after it goes to Uranus, which we all do. And then it <laughs> reappears it or past. I think it's actually, I think it's past Neptune, but then it reappears eight years later and then they go aboard and then they, they discover all this crazy shit. Like, like I don't want to spoil it for people that have never maybe given this movie a chance, but Jesus Christ, this movie is so good. And it, it's really sad because I've heard from the director and a few of the other people. It's not like I personally talked to him, but I've heard <laughs> uh, Dan, I've heard from I've day. heard from various YouTube uh, searches and Google searches that there was a uh, a director's cut of this movie, which unfortunately we'll never get because it was lost to time. It, it you know got degraded and and it just you know they just like you know that scene where they put the uh, they put the um, CD in and you see all that crazy shit going on where they're all like eating each other and it's like fucking nasty like there was like apparently an extended version of that and there was a lot more gorier stuff in that but when they showed the dailies they're like what the fuck are you a devil take it out we're just trying to make a science fiction alien ripoff movie and they're like okay well i guess we'll have to do that but yeah, do Event Horizon, not just the fact that it comes out of nowhere and slam dunks you in the face with some LeBron James magic, because you don't expect it. It just comes out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. And then he falls on the floor and he cries about a foul. But that's <laughs> beyond the point. But I'm saying it, it comes out of nowhere. It's the fact that it's acted so well. And, and and the cast is so good. By the way, one of the guys in the movie, uh, I think one of uh, the lead surgeon, is the bad guy from The Patriot. Did he die? Oh, hmm. yeah. Hmm. Like it's it's boy. so it, like it's so loaded with talent. It's it's ridiculous. I wish this got a sequel, but it's a great movie. That's a great choice, man. That's a great choice. It was in my honorable mentions. Did not make my list, but I do love me some of Rent Horizon, and I do wish that they would release the uh, whatever cut of that for sure. Directors, yeah. Uh, my my number eleven is going to be Scream. You know, I just think Scream is a great movie. Um, are you lying right now? Are you being? <laughs> you're fucking lying. I knew it. I was waiting on you to fucking delete. Yeah. Uh, no, my number eleven is gonna be um, what stuff? Uh, it's gonna. I be, thought it was gonna be Scream too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Blair Witch Project is my number eleven. Uh, what? And, yes, yes. I put my hand in, and then I Steven, thought, it's not what have you enough. done? You've gone down to the I, valley and I, made friends with the natives, and now you come I, back different man. <laughs> I pushed it deeper, and then everyone could know um, that anyone could have a dream. Uh, no, Blair Witch Project. Look. <laughs> On re <laughs> there's like if I was to sit down and watch a movie like I, I, I if I'm gonna sit down and watch a movie tonight I'm probably gonna be like oh, I'll probably watch Vin Horizon and probably disturb him hey probably House on Haunted Hill or the faculty probably before this movie <laughs> like all like all the movies on your list if I sat down now I'd be like I'd rather watch one of those like entertainment value straight yeah. up but this is one of those movies I put in and I put in so high just because of what it meant to horror mm. like it is a one of a kind it's a one of one there was nothing ever like it when it came out and it in the lead up to it was so important because like i thought it was real because i'm a fucking idiot box so uh, like, i mean everybody did it had one of the it had 
it, there was no, it had one of the most successful, maybe the most successful viral campaigns of all time because the internet yeah. was just coming out and they used it to their advantage. They yeah. used that goddamn Angel Fire built website to their, yeah. <laughs> to their, their, their advantage. It was perfect. I was, a, I was a kid in Jay's basement. Y'all went to bed. I was hanging out in your basement. I was no, you and bed. Cody were, and you both ran up like <laughs> pussy boys. You're like, my God, Jay, help. <laughs> It's real. Well, I showed Cody first. You guys both. I showed Cody first. And oh, like, yeah. oh my god, I believe it too. But like <laughs> yeah, the old school AOL, like, like, like they... <laughs> yeah, pull up and it's like this shit's real. I was like, oh, I'm fucking scared. This yeah. was one of the biggest movie events of my entire life, so I had to give it credit and 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 give credit where it was due. No movie has ever been marketed with the genius that Blair Witch Project yep. was marketed with. Does it hold up to today's test? No, not as a movie. But for what it meant for horror, it changed things at the time. It had to be in there for me. So, uh, again, while I'd rather watch like almost every movie on your list already above this today, for what it meant at the time, Blair Witch Project was fucking important. I, I Well, I'm not going to get into my necessary reasons for having it a little higher on my list. Oh, but, shit! Uh, but I, like I, I like it, like it, it genuinely scared the fuck out of me. Like it actually did watching yeah. it in theaters because you did go in with that mindset. It might be fucking real. Uh -huh. You didn't know. Fuck like the internet man. was so new and the marketing was so genius. You had no fucking clue. Genius. Absolutely. It wasn't like you could just go on Google. Like whenever you really want it. I mean, Google, you had to go at dial up and fucking get True. Google. And even then it wasn't like perfect. That's the fucking movie that they should make like an air. I, I've mentioned air. I watched it this week. Fucking loved it. You guys, you got to watch that dude air. The, the story about it's been Affleck, Matt Damon about the Michael Jordan oh. shoe. Fucking awesome. Amazing movie. But uh, yeah, they should yeah. do, they should do an air type movie about the making of the Blair Witch project. It would fucking rule. But anyway, what's your number 10? Um, My number 10 is going to be Candyman. Oh Yeah. I mean, you gotta give you gotta give some love up for Candyman, uh, and the reason why I put it at number ten is because it introduced into the arena a new villain, which again, so original, so creative, so different than what we've had before. It introduced a killer to join the echelons of the killers of history, meaning Freddy, Jason, Michael, all those guys, and and he fits, and and they did a great job. Tony Todd was amazing. As Candyman, uh, his voice is seductive as fuck. That motherfucker oh, could yeah. sell Dosa Keys <laughs> tomorrow. He, he could ha he has the voice of the most interesting man alive. The yeah. story itself is very well done. Uh, and and he's and every kid knew about Candyman growing up. Candyman or Bloody Mary. Uh, Candyman, they took that particular legend and they did something really unique and different with it. It reminds me a lot of what Wes Craven did with the idea of like dying in your sleep. He had read those news articles and, you Great know, in point. California. Yeah, he had done that and he, he took something that was a very real thing and then made it horrific in his movies. And I feel like Candyman is on the same level as far as creativity, in my opinion, as Wes Craven's Freddy Krueger. I, oh, I feel yeah. like it was a, it, like it it, it changed the genre in the in the way that you could think outside the box. You could take something that seems mundane and make it truly scary. And Tony. and again, Tony Todd is is incredible, dude. And I and I I think that guy is so underrated as an actor because I and I'm excited for him uh, to be in Spider Man Two on the PS Five. I think he's going to be a, a great Venom. But yeah, man, Candyman. Why? I mean, you can't say more. I mean, it's a great fucking movie. I mean, there's no way that. There's no way that someone could tell me that they're a true horror fan and they list all these things off like Michael and Jason and Freddy and, and yeah. Ch uh, Chucky and, and they're like, and Pinhead. And they're going to be like, oh, and that's it. I'm like, what the fuck? Where's Candyman? Yeah. Excellent fucking choice, dude. Could not agree more. Fucking Candyman rules the shit. And Candyman makes you about dandy. This <laughs> yeah. Apricadabra. Apricadabra. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your titties out. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh, my number 10 is going to be another sort mm. of hidden in the dust movie. It's going to be child, child. Strangeland. I didn't East have the balls Island. to put it on my list, but I wanted it there. Oh, God, I love this movie, dude. Yeah, that's great. I love this fucking movie. This was a random fucking rent for me. You guys may have never seen it. Some of you, if you haven't seen Strangeland, you got to get on that shit. It is the original desktop horror um like uh chat room fucking deviant goddamn movie of the 90s d snyder plays a fucking dude who's all tatted up and he's obsessed with like body pleasures and pain mm -hmm. um one of those dudes and he he 
gets these girls to come over his house using like the original version of like AOL chat rooms and he'll get them to come to his house and he'll like torture them and he'll put them up in like, like those piercings where people like hang by their back and shit. And the girl's dad is like on the hunt to try to find her. And it's a detective. He gets his daughter and he's looking after him. Fucking D Snyder is haunting. He's scary as fuck in that movie. And it all leads to this big build up, this meetup at the end. Strange Land is a fucking banger of a movie. If you haven't seen it, trust me, go fucking find Strange Land. It'll blow your goddamn eyes. Such I think uh, I think that Cody uh, rented that shit first of our group I, I, because he was in the Twisted Sister and he was like, "Oh, D Snyder's in it. I'll just take a fucking chance." I want to rock. <laughs> yeah, and then he rented it, and then the great goddamn movie. And you know the guy idea. He's all tattered up in piercings. We're not talking about up. Post Malone. We're talking yeah. about D Snyder. <laughs> Robert <laughs> Post Malone. Malone ever remade this movie post malone should be the guy <laughs> yeah uh, uh, robert england's in that movie too as like a yeah. drunk redneck dad who's in his in his underwear uh fuck you guys gotta watch you know what it felt like you watch strange land strange land is like a rob zombie movie done right yeah no it is yeah absolutely like i feel absolutely. like it's like a rob zombie movie yeah but it's done right 100%. And it's it, and it, it matches the time where like chat rooms were coming up and nobody really tapped into that darkness. Yeah. That that the 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 way you could fuck with people on the internet with like the catfish and all that shit. It tapped into it way early and it was like a fucked up rock and roll yeah. just dark ass HBO late at night horror movie. You got to watch it. Mm -hmm. It's good shit. Good shit. Give me your nine, you fuck. Uh piece well, we've already talked about it a little bit. Uh so it's going to be Stir of Echoes. Night. Oh, okay. uh, my number nine is going to be Stir of Echoes. Again, I, I already like gave my praise for it earlier in the uh, the stream. I, I feel like it was such an underrated film as far as like a 90s movie dealing with the paranormal and ghosts and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> overshadowed by, you know, again, and, and fairly, The Sixth Sense, which most people would feel is a superior movie on that particular subject. But again, I, I just feel like Kevin Bacon is so relatable in the movie. It's acted so well. Um, and there's a lot of scary moments in that movie. Of course, she's a friendly ghost, the one that haunts this fucking house because she can't get a job anywhere else, so she just lives there. <laughs> um, but there's I'm moments like the Piggly Wiggly. Yeah, the, yeah, in, in, in the ghost world. I'm working at the Piggly Ghosties. Uh, and I'm just trying to get by. But there's moments like when he's not doing what she wants him to do. Uh, and, and she's like, Wah! and like she screams at him in in one of his dreams i'm fucking yeah. scared to shit me there's a part in the movie theater when he's floating in and she's sitting in the crowd because remember he goes to the neighbor he's like turn it off whatever you did turn it off and and she's trying to turn it off but that ghost is there and she don't yeah. want him to it's like an ex that just won't she's like bitch i don't owe you alimony stop <laughs> and then i do and the coolest part is it does a little it does a little in not shalamani goodness at the end when the uh when the bullet goes through the pillow and 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 that, that you know they had always been a warning. Watch out for the feathers. Yeah. And his kid could have been sleeping on that pillow. Some cool oh, shit, yeah. man. Not Some really ghost, badass too. shit in that. Like really cool storytelling. Something I forgot to mention when I was talking about it too is that that therapist he goes to. He's like, "Can you fucking unfix the shit?" The guy's like, "All right, you're going now into the into the hypnotist into the further." He's like, "Deeper and deeper, <laughs> deeper and deeper." Yeah. And then the guy has a heart attack and dies. That's a great moment too. Yeah. yeah it sounds like Doctor Phil. Yes. <laughs> uh, my number nine is gonna be Tremors. Flicker, ah, flicker. I almost um, want to put it on mine, but I, I, you know, it's so weird about that movie. It almost leads too much into comedy. I get it. Yeah, and that's why it probably wasn't higher for me. It just, it's one of those movies that, dude, it's just they never recreated it. Like they may have made seventeen fucking sequels to it, but Burt Ward. Kevin Bacon together, the duo, Sexy. they never recreated it. It's its own vibe. It's the Shaun of the Dead of the 90s, mm -hmm. in my opinion, uh, just with how they got the comedy down, how they got the small town down. It was original. It was different. Nobody did anything like it. It was as if John Carpenter made a comedy, I guess it you does. could say. Like, exactly. It, it does feel like a Carpenter movie. Yeah, it's got that it's got that low down grittiness, but also or that not grittiness, but like just original factor to it. But it's also yeah. hilarious and it's also got great horror and it's got great comedy. It was just it's a time capsule of a movie of a movie that you'll never get again. I fucking love Tremors, man. No, you're you're dead on though. I, I think it's exactly like a Carpenter movie. Yeah. Like it with it, comedy, it, like, like a lighthearted. Yeah, it's like, like Shaun well, of the Dead fucked no, on Carpenter. Big Trouble in Little baby. China with a little bit more horror thrown in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Big Charlotte, that's a perfect example for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, my number eight 
is going to be um, we going we going to chill out with the people under the stairs this evening. Oh, that's this brilliant. evening. Uh, the West Craven people's calling, and they want us to come downstairs and chill out with them with their Kool Aid party going on in the basements. Uh, God damn, I'm gonna find you. You can't get better than fucking fuck West Craven. Fucker? The people under the stairs. Listen, I remember this movie was a go-to. If you have nothing going on in the evening and you want a horror kind of night, you got to throw in the people under the stairs in your list. You rent three, get one free. You got to get the people on the stairs on your side. Dude, it's a great fucking movie. It's actually sad, too. There's a lot. Amazing. There's some sadness going on. It's about basically this crazy-ass fucking religious couple that live in this, like, very subdued, bars on the window type of house we're talking about los angeles i guess but they're like living there and they kidnap children over the years they're also super rich they're like corrupt landlords and they uh they treat their kids that misbehave terribly like they cut out their tongues or they'll cut off an arm or they'll cut off a finger and they put them in the basement like a defective adopted kid and they just keep adopting them i think the scariest thing about this movie and it's also Bing Rames is badass in this fucking movie too. Like people yeah. forget that Bing Rames is in this. He's badass. But this the the the, the, the saddest thing is the girl that the, the girl the main girl in the movie that they've adopted when she's like uh she's trying to be perfect so they don't hurt her. And there's one scene where the crazy fucking mom and that by the way the mom is the scariest. The mom is the scariest in this movie. The mom is absolutely the fucking most terrifying. Dude, mother, uh, yeah, Ooh, she, God. absolutely the most terrifying. She was like, uh, the girl gets like blood on her dress, and she's like, you got gas! And then she was like, <laughs> she screams and she throws her into a scolding hot bath water, and then Thank she's you. like, the girl screaming, and she's like, the fires of hell will be fucking hotter. I'm like, Jesus Christ, it's like watching TBN at 3 a.m. You but and I, I both, in <laughs> fact, dated a girl who had parents like that, yes. Uh, but dude, I, I think that movie, the pacing of the film, the, 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 just the, the way it's shot, the way it feels like it really does put you in that house. And and I love the, the, the main character in that. I can't remember the guy, the, the kid's name, the actor, he was in mighty ducks. I think mighty ducks too. Great. Uh, or Sandlot. No, in mighty ducks. Uh, the kid? great. Yeah. Um, the kid. Um, we met him actually briefly cool. at, we were oh, in no. Arby's. We were at Arby's at Scarefest, and he was standing next Talk to about us. Sean Whalen. I think Sean yeah. Whalen. No, no, not Sean Whalen. Roach? No. No, the black guy that was the main... Oh, no, no, yeah, fool. The fool. kid. Yeah. Yeah. Fool. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, was, he was a nice guy. Incredible, dude. Like, just an incredible movie. Uh, really good. And you know what it actually is? This sh What's scary about this movie is that that could happen down the road from you. In a perfectly normal-looking suburban neighborhood, just like Halloween is timeless for that reason, that could be happening down the road. This crazy Dude. shit could be going on. How insane is it, man? How insane is it? And it didn't even take place crazy. in Utah, which I was shocked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I think one hundred percent agree with you. The parents fucking made it work. Bing Rames and Fool made it work. But like that movie's under. It's still as as like classic as it is. It's still underrated as shit. And like I mean. Fuck, dude. It's just Wes Craven. Dude, imagine fucking Wes Craven. Nightmare on Elm Street. Fucking scream. Goddamn people under the stairs. Hill has have eyes. Last house on the left. Yeah. That man is the greatest horror director of all time, I feel like. There, I'll just well, say that right there, now. I, well, you know what? That could be a great video one day to do a, yeah. do a versus. But I will say um, the idea, the, the whole thing about the, 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 the people under the stairs. And I just want you, if you have never seen it, do yourself a favor tonight and rent it. It's so fucking good and it's engaging like even if you're not a horror fan it's got that thriller yeah. element that will continuously make you watch it yeah it's so it's good. scary it's funny it's entertaining it also <laughs> says something about society it's you always it's yeah it does I, I always thought that the the main guy in it uh the husband i always do for the longest time i thought that was joe bob briggs <laughs> I you're did. Good at that role, yeah, I do. I, he's like, it. yeah, like there's one part where he shoots Silver the, Bullet. I know he's great, and he he shot the like, Oh Ever shit! Forget. I killed Prince. Because <laughs> <laughs> like he's like, you killed Prince. And by the way, they're 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 brother and sister. They're married yeah. and they fuck. He's like, I got him. I did it. I got him. Again, I killed him. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so fucking scary, man. It's good, uh, man. Totally. I could not agree more. Fucking amazing pick. Uh, I'll do this one quick because we already talked about Candyman. It's my number eight. Uh, just a fucking classic. Goddamn, it's one of those movies that you could watch anytime and it holds up just as well. Oh, Caprini Green, that mm -hmm. fucking story. It's so fucking, there's nothing like Candyman. Like, nope. 
of all the horror movies that are out there, nothing feels like Candyman does. It's its own entire fucking vibe as a movie. And again, it's a movie that says stuff without ham fisting it. It has a lot to say about the world, about the, the people that are in it and everything going on. Tony Todd's an amazing fucking bad guy in that scary as shit. It's got pure fear. It's got it's an entertaining movie to watch. It's it's got it fucking all, man. Candyman is one of the greatest all time horror movies in general. So would you put that um, at, like would you put that in the legendary killer status along Michael and, and Jason? No, I, it's, I, it's, I would. It's not on Mount Rushmore. But no, it's like, not Rushmore, but just like the echelons of of. of Hall of Famers. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Even though the sequels never really were that great, the no. original was still the fucking ones good. Are yeah, the they just never them. lived up to what the original offered. But yep. Candyman is just, it's a one of one, man. There's no movie like it. There's just no fucking movie like it at all, in my opinion. Uh, before we go into the last seven, let's catch up on some super titties real quick. That's right. You said you were at 850. Uh, yeah. Niner. Yeah. Eight. So I'm gonna get in your ear. I'm gonna talk about the Kentucky Wildcats, and then I'm gonna um, spray some lotion. Michael Parton says, "I thought he was the dad from Hellraiser." I, I think you're assuming. Oh, Frank, you're thinking Frank of was not Frank. No, Hellraiser. not Frank. Yeah. Um, you're thinking of the actual dad from Hellraiser, the first one. No, he wasn't. It's not the same guy. Oh my darling, where's the fucking last super chat? You said eight fifty eight. That's where you were at. I don't know. Did he, you get, he says, Mike, please. Did you get Wyatt Atley here? Uh, no, I did? didn't. Okay, I'll scoot, I'll scoot a little forward. Did you get Trey Film Edit? Yes, I got him. Oh, that's right. Now we're on fucking, fucking pace. Wyatt Atley says, what's up, guys? Jay, I still want that strip tease that was promised on the premium Patreon tier. Wait, what? Yeah, I forgot about that. I got drunk or something, and I said something I shouldn't have said out loud, but... I mean, sure. I mean, if we ever meet in private, let me find. Let me go. I'll, I'll send you a personal video I have. We can do it. Giving we can do that. Me and two homeless people lap dance. Kyler Allen, thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Mark and Jackson says, my son Jax wants to know, who do you think won, Freddie or Jason? That's a great question, Jax. Hey, good job, little dude. Um, I mean, as far as physical talent, um, Jason beat the shit out of him. But, I mean, Freddie still survives in the end because his head was cut off and he's still fucking blinking. So... I, I got to give it to Freddie, even though I don't want to do that. I think that Jason overwhelmed him with pure, like, uh, aggression. But Freddie was the smarter guy. He's like, yeah, you can cut my head off, but I'm, I'm technically still alive. So I will go 100% Jason won. And the reason I say that is because even when they were in the real world, Jason, I mean, Freddie would fuck up anybody in the dream world, right? Jason has no yeah. chance. He's too dumb to, like, be like, I'm big and I'm bad. Uh, but, like, they, they kind of nerfed. They didn't nerf, but they kind of gave Freddy superpowers in the real. No, world. they didn't. Freddy, yeah, they didn't. They 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 OP'd him in in yeah. real life. He's no fuck. He's never been like that. They turned Freddy into a martial artist in real life. Like yeah. he was like yeah. So so like to me, Jason definitely won that. Jax. Hey, and it's cool that you and your son fucking party like that's that. cool, so, man. You guys are awesome. I'm gonna. Switch I wish on I had a son. I might get one one day. They might be at the store half off or something. I'll just pick one up. <laughs> Yeah, I'll let you read that. I'm gonna switch the Uh I don't know. That's why I wanted me to read it because I don't know. Uh, thank you, man. Uh, it says thank you guys for the last. Have you guys seen Black Mirror at all? New season is coming out soon, and I'm really excited for it. Um, I have not seen it. Uh, I know everybody talks, but I hear the uh, mentions all the time and, and and references to Black Mirror. I haven't watched it personally, so no. Um, but yeah, I mean, I know it's popular, and I'm glad that it's it's getting a second season, and you enjoy it. So it's just not for me. Have you seen uh, Have you seen Black Mirror? I see a couple episodes of it. Uh, so on the way from the camera to the chair, I pulled my pants down and I ran by Kay with my butt hanging out, mm -hmm. and then but I was so into it, I hit my elbow on the movie shelf and I hit my funny bone. I've seen several episodes of Black Mirror, and it's. It's kind of like Tales from the Crypt if it was a, like new tech and new age made by like fucking Elon Musk. I enjoyed it, but it leaves you with a dark feeling in your tum tum. Mm -hmm. So I haven't continued to watch it because it makes me feel dark inside. But uh, people who love it, I totally get why. I really do. So it's stinky and without wow. remorse. It makes you feel like a dark winged duck. All right. 
Jack Hunter says, where the fuck is my wrench? It's been months now. <sighs> well, you ain't getting it back, motherfucker. You shouldn't have loaned it to us to begin with. If you put something inside of me by Geneva Convention law, it's mine to keep, yeah. Jack. Is that Geneva in Sweden? <laughs> It's is that chocolate. some Swedish cheese? No, it's a chocolate. <laughs> no, I don't know where Geneva is. I mean, is it in Finland, Norway? I don't know. It's a, it's oh. one of the northern countries. I think it's in a convention center. Or Zachary Desclatches says, been watching you guys since Halloween ends days. And I, it's sad that we're so fucking old. Halloween ends is like a, that's, that's nostalgic now. <laughs> it's, it's fucking long. Like, uh, yeah, are we in the year 2046? <laughs> hey, but thank you for the support, man. Really appreciate it. I can't thank you both enough. Also, Mike, please, if you could check your messenger, it would mean a lot. Thanks again, guys. Which messenger, Zach? He's there probably so talking about Facebook. Thank God I got rid of that devil on the teat. Oh, one thing I'll tell you I never check is Facebook Messenger because I get nudes in there and they're all of women. And I think that's gross. I like nudes of men. <laughs> so I don't believe you. I really well, you got enjoy it, looking at it, all sorts I'll, of things. But one day we'll, when we close the channel, we'll just do a live stream and just like show our unopened and then uh, get arrested. Facebook messengers. <laughs> just, uh, no, I, I don't know which one you're talking about, Zach, but best place to reach Thank me you. is. Only fans or uh, email for sure, but thank you for the support, dude. Really do appreciate it. Um, but all I want to do is fuck guys. Uh, Jack Hunter says I want to see Jeff cringe. Y'all watch Stab and Stab Two, cringe baby, cringe. It's gonna hurt. I hear it's dark. I hear it's gonna be twisted, and we appreciate you, Jack. And I promise we will get to that. We will. That rhyme didn't mean it to. I'm gay. I like hey, and guys by the bay, Jay. Well what <laughs> i was just making things rhyme cj graham said fruit loops has recently been my favorite oh that's a good fruit loops is a great cereal yeah but you know you're talking about shit that gets soggy that shit gets pretty soggy at the end i actually like to let my fruit loops get a little soggy because they're a little crunchy at first a little sogginess to the fruit loops makes me feel a little bit better that's a good mm. pick though that's a really good pick man nighttime said loomis if you scratch my back i'll scratch yours why don't you goddamn scratch goddamn careerbuilder.com? <laughs> we'll see if that helps you out. It might <laughs> that might uh, relieve the itch pain. <laughs> Joe Fouts, I said Slenderman, Mark Wahlberg, thoughts on Deep Blue Sea. Is that the movie where Samuel L. Jackson got eaten by a shark? Yeah, me me believe it was. Um, he got devoured by Captain D seafood. I don't know. I don't go swimming in the ocean with my kids. I like to sit by the. I like to sit in the sand and eat some fucking turkey burgers. I like to eat some turkey burgers from Wall Burgers. By the way, you guys should check out Wall Burgers. I don't know why my my Mark Wall is way too like Brooklyn or whatever right now. I don't know what's going on. I need to like recalibrate and reset. That was that was awful. I apologize. Yeah, fine. I mean, be just like the set in the Florida to eat subway sandwich. Not go up near the sea. Nobody <laughs> go near the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Tell By the way, it wouldn't be everything's better under the sea. Slinger Man's never going to be near the sea. <laughs> <laughs> That'd probably be no. the worst place he, that he'd ever pick up a victim. He'd he be too in the much forest. Of, yeah, too much of a tan. The Violator eight sixty two. I think I hurt my tooth when I opened that white claw. Yeah, I, I, What's I, I saw you do it. Thank God, I would never do it. Dude, you got to take care of your teeth. You all take care okay. of your teeth. Take care of your it's teeth. Important. It's it important. really is. What's up, Mike and Jay? Would have turned in sooner, but I didn't get a notification from YouTube. You know what's yeah, weird? Is, I don't. I went the, actually, what, I will, I'm going to ask this every time. Did you hit the bell icon? Because a lot important. of people don't have the bell icon activated, and so I mean, dude, I, I, like April is subscribed Check to shit out. on my fucking like because we use the one account on on uh, on the Xbox, and so she's yeah. just, like, and I always get fucking alerts. That yeah. a new video was posted. It is important to click the bell. That will help. Um, and then also, so I, I've even gone in and made a point of making a post about it so that it went out twice. And the fact that people still say they don't get it, it's crazy. Not your all's fault, obviously. It's a YouTube thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, make sure you have that bell clip for sure, Violator. And we appreciate you, man. D Mitch is they get in that shadow ban. We hope not. <laughs> it could be. It's possible. <laughs> get... It's possible. Inky the aliens. Good to see you, Inky. Says, hey, Dr. Loomis, can I borrow Michael for a day? I promise I'll be on my best behavior. I promise I won't probe him. I promise. Pinky promise. Yes, yeah, sure. Take him to your anus and leave him there. <laughs> Get hemorrhoids. Go ahead and take him. What the goddamn? 
Yes, if you're an Iki the alien, take goddamn Michael up into outer space. Like I said, to Uranus, Neptune, or beyond. I don't want him ever back on Earth. Keep him, probe him, put something in his asshole, and make his mouth explode with joy. That sounds kind Good of fun. For you. Can I can I take that ride? Colton mm-hmm. Kaler says, "Sup, dudes? Y'all see the trailer for the new Schwarzenegger doc? Looks good. Have y'all watched any good shows lately? Need something new to watch, dude? That trailer mm-hmm. looked fucking. I awesome. haven't seen that. Uh, no, uh, I think the only trailer I, I've seen good. the the uh, Michael J. Fox one. Oh, for still. Yeah, I, oh, called, yeah. Right? I, I don't know, but I, yeah, I want to watch it's called it. Still. Yeah. I'm gonna get uh, rid of this now. What? The, the red cup. I'm not drinking out of it anymore. Uh, no, you can only see my nutrition facts. I'm being thoughtful and careful. But uh, I will way. say uh, the uh, I I don't know anything about the Arnie doc documentary, but um, the Michael J. Fox one looks really good. I, I will watch that. I, the Arnold one looks fucking amazing, man. And he has a book coming out, and then he's got Fubar coming out. I'm fucking excited, dude. That guy, that guy is the most prolific out. motherfucker. I swear to God. Like, think bad. about it. Arnold Schwarzenegger is probably the most prolific guy you've ever heard of in your life. He comes from Austria. He can't speak the fucking language. I think yeah. Bill Barr told this joke. He can't speak the language. He goes to a country where he can't speak the language. He gets big, buff, as and then becomes a movie star. Learns the language. Then eventually he marries a Kennedy and he becomes a fucking movie star. Then he becomes governor of California. Yeah. Like, that dude... That's what it's Arnold about. Schwarzenegger is like a fucking god. Like he's like Zeus. He's built like Zeus, and he's like Zeus. That's what that. Yeah, that's what the doc's about, man. It covers all of it from his rise to the politics, whatever. Arnold's like a second dad to me. I love that man so fucking much. I can't he's really. Good. See it. No, I'm, I'm not. You can keep going. I'm just going over here. Okay. Uh, speaking of new shows, I'm not watching any new shows. I'm still catching up with Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso is still fucking amazing. If you haven't done it, I promise you, dude. Ted Lasso is the great antiquator. That's not a word, but Ted Lasso is the great, like most shows you watch and they just, just depress you. Like, like I'll watch this character go through something else and go through something else and go through something else. But Ted Lasso is one of those shows that actually you watch Shit, it and you feel it. good about life afterwards. Same thing as shrinking on Apple TV. I love that show as well. Uh, we watched the Murdoch, uh true crime thing. I ended up having bad dreams that I murdered someone all night. Can't recommend that, but the documentary is pretty good. You've been watching any new shows? Um, no, <laughs> I no, I really, I, I want, I want a new show. I, I haven't watched anything though. So, yeah, uh, you gotta get on Ted last one. I want you to so bad. Zachary, that's the last says, Jay, I feel you on the whole AI getting smarter is scary. Did you guys see the Snapchat ones? This is pre Skynet. No, but I'm, I'm sure it exists. I don't know what you're mean, but look, that, that's another good example. A Snapchat, like you could get a fucking message from somebody pretending that they're int- into you or whatever, and it would be an AI generated image along with a voice that matches, and then lure you into a fucking dark alleyway where they continuously rape your ass with a huge dick, and then they steal all your money and beat the shit out of you. I mean, there's a lot of like, dude, we are inter, we are literally entering into cyberpunk. We're on our way to cyberpunk. Uh, that's the that's the game that had dicks in it. So watch out because there's going to be dicks everywhere. You could change your dick size. Dicks. Have you ever played that game? You should play I, it. It's fun. You my, could actually I, live out your life with a big dick. It was bought for me for Father's Day because we were going to play it together. It played five minutes. So I was like, we got to return this. We're going to get a different Father's Day gift. Well, no, it's fun do. though. It's fun. Like they there was a lot of patches and a lot of cool things that they did. You should play it. Um, shikstas says have you guys ever heard jason's mom by ice nine kills it's a cover parody of stacy's mom it's hilarious and goes hard i've not heard that but i bet it's fucking i bet it's just exactly what we, you we were, so uh, we, yeah we've reacted to a couple of um, ice nine kills so 100 percent. i haven't heard that one uh i've been working on a uh a song about how Stu and billy are gay together uh lately so uh, you should go to a bud light bar and do that one <laughs> uh definitely gonna have mm-hmm. something for that soon for sure just mm-hmm. a heads up uh bryce russo uh, oh, I've seen this guy before. Him and this lady look like they just have a great time together, and I yeah. fucking love and appreciate that. He says, hey, Mike and Jay, God damn, I hope all is well. So the other night, went out drinking and said hi to some girls, and I was too drunk to continue the conversation. <laughs> it's a work in progress. Take care, guys. <laughs> hey, man, that's what it is. But you had the balls. You had mm-hmm. the balls to be drunk and go say hi to a couple of girls. That's some cool shit right there, man. 
You should be proud of yourself. Baby steps. Baby Thanks. steps on the way, Jedi Padawan, to the Jedi Knight area that you need to go to. So good well, for seven. you, man. That's good we for talk? you. I mean, I remember when I came out of my divorce, that was the hardest fucking thing to do is say hi. That's the hardest fucking thing to do is say hi. And, and even if you don't get the appropriate response, at least you have the nut to be like, hey, hello. Yeah. <laughs> hello. Yeah. <laughs> and I misread the situation based on the picture, but I do remember your comment about it before. Another tip I want to give you, not from me, but from a friend. Uh, we gave you some tips before about how to approach women in the in the wild. But also I heard from a friend that change your profile pictures. Uh, now, specifically, you're with a lady in this one, so that's definitely the way to go anyways. But like if you're single or whatever, change your don't have like a picture of you just like hanging out by yourself, having a good time. Like that's what you think. But the trick is take a picture apparently of yourself like doing something super social that looks super fun, like with mm. people, like in a lively situation where you also look taller than you are and take a picture of yourself doing something like that. And apparently you get like twice the hits on it. than if it's just like a picture of you alone in your bathroom in your car or whatever, apparently that's a big game changer, by the way. So just a hot tip there on the side, but Hey, or, just, you or maybe just like uh, throw up some gang signs, put a bunch of rings on your fingers and look like Ollie G. I uh, just, what the mother? Just <laughs> yeah, do that. Do that too. Hundred percent. Hey, and uh, then, you know what? That way you can like knock out the hoes that just want you for like a quote unquote money. Run, a, run, run through some of them hood rats. Get them out of the way. <laughs> Nighttime says, "Lewis, I thought I saw you in Godfather Part 3. It's funny. I thought I saw you in an unemployment line. <laughs> you went there. Joe Bob says, "It was great seeing you in Wham." discord earlier today mike now that you remembered it exists remind the other people hey you were we what the fuck you didn't tell me this there's a it's been it's been around for months Wait, no but you had, i didn't know you were in there yeah i was in the, we talked about you live hot streams. piece of shit we talked in, in live streams on the internet we talked about it and how it existed <laughs> it's, yeah but i didn't know you were in it today before. i didn't know what the fuck that was oh we talked about it together in the live streams before we Our had but Joe i didn't know you were doing here. it today i didn't this is what happened Here's what happened. I popped in there a few times. When it first and Joe Bob up. says die cord. So you were Just, like in there planning your death. Like what the uh, fuck is I the was. seventh heaven? This is how you die and become a cord. Or no, uh, the heaven's gate. You get reincarnated as a cord. Uh, incarnate, reincarnate. You know what? Fuck off. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, no. Popped in there today. Uh, loaded it up. Realized that I deleted the app completely. And they said, there's a We Watched Movie Discord. Let me pop on in there. Some good folks talking. We watched a movie. Had a good few minutes hanging out and saying good morning to you. We have a Wham Discord. Search it on Discord. We watched a movie. Joe Bob will put the link in the fucking chat for you guys. Yeah, Joe Bob. I mean, uh, maybe you could time. send it to my fucking email. I didn't know the fuck where, where the fuck even to go. What the he's fuck? Literally, is that? he's literally on this live stream with us in it before. Brought it up and talked about it. Where I literally don't it. remember. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't. It's Joe a Bob. Thing. You I'll send fucking you an email kids and your crazy ass fucking it. crazy ass I'll, antics. I'll send you a link directly to it so that you know exactly where to go. Well, but I'm not yeah, gonna for go everybody now. else. I don't want to. <laughs> for everybody else, Joe Bob, put a link down there. There's a way of Discord. I'm gonna pop in there more often, man. I had a good time talking to you guys this morning. Dan Haran says, What if the AI is just a bunch of Johnny Fives? What is Johnny well, Five? Uh, Johnny that's from Short Circuit. That would actually be oh. uh very easily controlled if it was a bunch of Johnny Fives. Because they're they're fucking big goddamn gigantor robots that don't. I mean, even though they are smart and they're cute, I am Johnny Five. I am alive. Do not disseminate <laughs> Stephanie. I mean, but at the same time, uh, that's not gonna. I don't. I think AIs are gonna be. Well, they're in the internet, man. It's like a bunch of fucking herpes that are just running around, crazy. I love herpes. I want to be a groupie. I would actually be a groupie rather than have a groupie. I think that's probably where my future would go. Horner, thank you, man. Appreciate that so much. Uh, hey, it's good to see you, Jordan Cruz. And Joe Valentine, Loomis, help me. My wife loves K-pop like BTS. Help. Drop her like the Black Plague. <laughs> Shit. If you don't like the Eagles, get out of my face. What the hell is <laughs> BTS and K-pop? Sounds like goddamn venereal diseases. You don't want those. You don't want those. I can promise you. Christopher Sampson said, "Best soundtrack in a movie: Rocky Four, Halloween 2018, or Scarface." Ooh, well, I Rocky mean, Rocky Four is going to kill it. I mean, I don't even like, care what else you said. Yeah, come on, Christopher. We, we are. Four. Yeah, 
Like I, I could give a contender for Scarface. I could give a contender, but Rocky Four, dude. It, like it, it literally gives you like five songs. Yeah, that are yeah, awesome said, yeah. immediately. Hearts on fire. That, no way out. Strong desire. What was name on? No way out. Um, Hearts on fire. Sweetest victory. Eye of the Tiger, which is basically from Rocky Three, right, remade. No doubt. And then there was another one. There was a there was a fifth song um, that was really fucking badass. Um, because okay, so sweetest yeah. victory, no Did way, you say no easy way out already, no easy way out, no easy uh, way out. Hearts on uh, fire, uh, Eye of the Tiger remake, and then there was there. I swear there was a fifth song. No, two worlds collide, burning heart. Yeah, with the burning heart. That's it, right there. Five fucking songs, and like There's usually CDs only held like twelve, so like twelve or thirteen uh, tracks. Yeah. It's Rocky Four, one hundred percent. Two thousand eighteen. The Scarface. Scarface is great though, because you got the uh, um, push, push it, it to, to the, the limit. Limit. Down its what side, and you got to put there. Did you ever think uh, that song belonged more in the Karate Kid than Scarface when it was happening? Because <laughs> it was like too up. It was too upbeat. You could even throw it in Footloose if you just say. <laughs> uh, Dan Murphy says, "Hey guys, hi. I mean guys. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey." <laughs> Name one food item, one candy, one soda combo at the theaters. I'm popcorn, peanut butter, M M&M, cherry coke. That's a good choice. Hey, well, that's, that's a, a nice lineup. You got that's a question dude. for Mike though. I, I don't. I, I usually just like. I don't actually get anything. I, I like. I just go in. I, I, Fucking like weirdo. It's, it's beer at. It's beer at the bar. Like when they start serving beer, that you could go into the movie theater and drink beer. That's what I get. Before it was just like nothing because I didn't want to spend any more money than I had to because like you literally got to take out a mortgage on your house to fucking get candies. <laughs> I usually don't even drink at the theater like I if I can help unless uh, yeah I, I almost ninety nine percent of the time I don't I don't even have a beer so I'll do I'll do Coke Zero but sometimes I'll throw a twist on it I'll be like hey can you put a little cherry coke in there so you get the Coke Zero just a spritz of cherry coke that's that's perfection. That's perfection. Absolutely popcorn is a must. You can't go without it. So that only leaves candy. And my personal favorite candy choice is Butterfinger Minis. I love me some fucking Butterfinger Minis. Or if you're in not in a chocolate mood, Lifesavers Gummies. That's the way to go. And if you're not feeling popcorn, if you if your blood pressure is high like me and you want to take the salt down just a scooch, you definitely want to go uh, Hot Cheetos. Hot Cheetos is, is, is what I've been going with lately. It's a good time, too. Mm. Uh, I do love them, dude. I'm so so the other dude, other day went to a theater. This will be a quick story, I swear to God. Um, and then we'll PP and then we'll finish the list. But like, I fucking go to the fucking Ben Affleck movie the other day, right? Hypnotic, mm. fucking go see the movie. All my, I know no one's, no one's gonna fucking watch the, you know, whatever. Buy my ticket on the way there, dude. Two fucking people in the entire theater, <clears> way <throat> up back. I buy my one ticket, D1 or D11, left side, all alone. I sit down to watch the movie. This fucking old lady walks in. She's like 107. And she's got a blanket. And she's got glasses on. She actually looks like Johnny Knoxville dressed as an old person. It's weird. Mm -hmm. Not the seat next to me, but the seat right next to me. She sits down. Like, I even had, I had to put my feet down. She sits down. As soon as the movie starts, as soon as the quiet part of the movie begins, Ben Affleck's like, where's my daughter? She's like, oh. So hot. Oh. And just starts chewing so fucking loud. Mm. And I'm thinking, there's a whole goddamn it theater here. And you bought your she bought her ticket after me and still chose it right fucking there. And I didn't, I felt bad. Mm. I felt rude. I didn't want to just get up and leave. So I devised the whole plan. Uh, all I had was my hot Cheetos and my soda pop. And I got up and I walked to the... I just couldn't take it anymore, man. I just could not take it anymore. I walked into the aisle and I stood there in the fucking aisle and watched five straight minutes of this goddamn movie standing, holding my shit from the aisle. And then I snuck to the front row. Cause like, I didn't want to hurt her feelings. You know I would have like got up and called the security and said, you're a terrorist. <laughs> just punched her in the face. Like I would have, I would have, I would have called. I, like if you just stood in the aisle, I would have immediately like left the theater and called security <laughs> on your ass. I'm like this motherfucker yeah. is like planning a bomb or he's shitting oh, out some I, ideas. I, I, Dude, I was not gonna sit there for two hours and listen to her eat that fucking corn with her mouth open. I wasn't, but I really felt bad because she was alone. Mm. I was alone, but like I didn't want to hurt her feelings, so I just kind of quietly snuck out. And then my plan was, I'll sit in the aisle for five minutes, and then I'll just like I like literally did this and like snuck mm. into the front row. So I watched the entire rest of the movie fucking like this with my neck broke, 
in the goddamn yeah. movie up there just so she wouldn't know that I left because of her. Was it a good movie? No, it sucked. It wasn't worth See, it at all. Like all that fucking neck. Like I wish I <laughs> my neck worked normal, and I could do that. I couldn't even like uh, oh, fuck that. If it if sucks. it was already a bad movie, I, fuck that. I'm not doing it. <laughs> it was not good at all. I did not have a good time. I didn't have a good time watching it at all. Um. Anyways, where where the fuck were we? But like, why do why do people do it? Like, I know it gets on your news because like you and I will go to the movie together. And I'll be like, I want snacks. I'll always be next to you. Like, oh, no, oh. it doesn't. Well, it doesn't bother me because I know you. I can right. hear you crunching, but I feel like because uh, <laughs> I feel like you're like a, like a brother of mine. It's like that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He's like, hey, yo, Mikey, can you crunch any louder in my ear? And he's like, ah. like, it, it, like that's different. But yeah, if I just sure. hear a random fucking person behind me going, oh, dude. Hey, and they all do it when it's quiet. And they too. make They're love like, oh. to their popcorn. It's gross. I don't like that shit at all. Um, yeah. Dude, I will literally have food in my mouth. And if the movie gets quiet, I'll hold that shit in my mouth like a fucking squirrel. I'll be like, and then when it gets loud, I'll be like, you know, but I, I can't stand quiet crunching. It makes me crazy. Um, yeah. Zachary the Thratches says, still laughing my ass off about Mike getting so drunk he took his shirt off and fell asleep on the side of the road. <laughs> Y'all make delivering Amazon go by so fast. Hey, hey look, cool, hey, man. Dude, you were doing a service. Thank you, man. Like, That's awesome. Yeah. You guys deserved a raise, like, especially through the pandemic. I hope you guys got that shit too. Um, yeah, you guys always fucking deliver. If Amazon said it's going to be there tomorrow. At this yeah. time, you motherfuckers are like, okay, we're gonna do it. Like you're like Santa Claus of the yeah, fucking we, delivering service. So we, yes, you, you motherfuckers got us through the pandemic, <laughs> no doubt, and Christmas. Yeah. So hey, we. Appreciate I have to you, pee Zach. really fucking bad. All right, go ahead. Go, you go pee. I'll go after you get done, okay. and then we'll finish our listicles. Um, but yeah, no, Zach. That story, uh, just a real quick cliff notes for you guys. I don't know it's the drunkest I've ever been in my entire life. Friends, bachelor party went out. Ordered a whole pitcher of mixed drinks. Found out nobody at the table wanted mixed drinks. Was very broke at the time. So I thought to myself, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to drink this whole thing because I can't waste it. Went to a country bar afterwards for whatever God knows reason. There was a punch machine. You know, the punch machines. Punched it, broke the record, kept punching it. Ended up with a crowd around me. Started drinking vodka and Red Bulls for some reason. Started dancing. Was dancing. My Went to a strip club. Got kicked out. Uh, went to a party afterwards, thought I was in my hometown, wasn't left because I didn't want to be there anymore because I had 76, six, 77 drinks left and then started walking, hoping to find my house, did not passed out on the side of the road, took off my shirt, used it as a pillow, woke up the next morning, literally on the side of a two lane road in Lexington, Kentucky alone, walked to a street side and just sat there until my friends came and found me. Absolutely don't recommend it. Be responsible with your alcohol drink. And this is like 20 years ago. Um, awful, awful situation. But hey, it did make for a good story. And I'm glad you appreciate it, Zach. And uh, much respect to you for doing what you do, my friend. We appreciate you. Appreciate you, whore nerd. Pretty sure I did that twice. That's okay. Fuck it. Fuck it, man. Fuck it. Nighttime says, Loomis, I work at Cult of Thorn with Chucky. Well, I don't think Loomis would appreciate that as a job choice. You know, I don't think he would respect that. It doesn't sound like he would. Not not, not in the least, my friend. Ed Sattler says, Days Confused has a great soundtrack, but I'm 47. I like that old shit. Uh, dude, it goes with, like, your age, for sure. Guardians of the Galaxy, one of the main reasons that original soundtrack just broke through is because it introduced people to shit they hadn't seen before. And the scenes in the movie use that song to really transcribe it to people. I feel like the Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and 3 soundtracks were great by all means, but they didn't really have that same thunder for whatever reason. But 100%, man, uh, for me, soundtracks are Empire Records, Clerks soundtrack, uh, American Pie. Um, those were those were quintessential soundtracks to me as far as like assorted soundtracks go. Scream more than any other. Scream 1, 2, and 3, absolutely. But um, yeah, man, I get it. I do get it. I need to go back and watch Days and Confused again. That shit was funny as hell back in the day. Dan Heron, a good man, not good at volleyball, but by God, he'll try. Says, I was afraid to chew drink when I saw A Quiet Place. Dude, that, like, I don't think people understand it, though. Like, people who have mouth issue noises. A Quiet Place, I, I went and I watched it, and I knew that everybody was in the same fucking hellscape that I was in. Right? But... There are people who just don't know. Like, whatever movie you go to, there's always a motherfucker who's just sitting there going, oh, 
Uh, and you're like, dude, have some fucking awareness. God damn, please have some fucking awareness. You're making me crazy as fuck. I'm trying to pay attention to the dialogue and all I can hear is, oh, ah, ah, ah. put the shit in your mouth, close your fucking lips, and then fucking chew it. For God's sakes, I will fucking murder someone one day. I swear to God. And this tape will prove that I did it. But I'm, I'm with you on that. I am with you on that. I, I, I shit you guys not. I will put food in my mouth, close my lips, and then if I'm chewing loud and the movie gets quiet, I will fucking hold that shit in my mouth like a fucking chipmunk. And, just like... and then all of a sudden, it's like, I'm like, oh, God. It's like when you're taking a shit and you're like, you have to shit really bad and you're like holding it tight, but you don't want to embarrass yourself because you know when you come out, it's going to be like. And like the guy next to you flushes and you're like, oh, thank God. Or you flush your own toilet. Have some fucking self-respect. For God's sakes. It's upsetting. Horror Nerd says, love your vids. Are you watching Mrs. Davis? It's great. I've never even heard of Mrs. Davis, Horror Nerd. But I'm going to write it down right now. Mrs. Davis. Because I haven't heard of that. And it sounds kind of fucked up. Kind of hot. To be honest with you. If we're being honest with each other here. But Yeah. Does, does that get you guys, though? Am I alone in that? Am, am I absolutely alone in that? That, like, people chomping their popcorn like they're at a fucking goddamn junkyard makes you crazy? Because it makes me fucking nuts. I can't take it. Oh. Hi, Himu. Hello, Ghost Giant. <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. When I come back, we finish this. We say goodnight. Yeah, we, we go finish goodbye. this. We have to finish this. We have yes. to do it. Goodbye. Bye. I see you soon. I see right, you real soon. Way, on super chat, so we're all good there. All right. Beauty, Scoot, I see. <clears throat> oh, but then a new super chat comes into the arena and says, "I challenge for first place." John Horacide, thank you so much. Says, speaking of good soundtracks, Fury Road and Mandy had good soundtracks. Yes, they did. I would, I would agree with you, John Horacide. I feel like it was horrific and good in the best way for Mandy. I feel like Mandy was better than Fury Road as far as not only the picture, but the soundtrack as well. But yes, I agree with you. But yeah, we got to get this list done. We've just been farting around with you guys and we love it, by the way. But then we forget what we're doing and then this whole video becomes pointless. <laughs> anyway, it's been a good time. It's been a hell of a fucking time. And I've had a great time the entire time. Hi, Action. Don't worry. We're going to get that list done. Because, I mean, it's always going to be the thing um, in the comments. Like, when the fuck is the list? Jesus Christ, these assholes just talk. They just talk and talk and talk. Can you guys give me a timestamp for real? It's not going to happen. The timestamp is all... Like, even if... They put a timestamp in the comments. The timestamp would be like, here's where the list starts, but then it's going to have all this extra shit in the middle and people are going to get mad. That's what happens. I have ADHD. Mike has ADD. So it's just going to be all over the fucking place. But, you know, God God love you. You try. Uh, Clinton says, join the Discord. I didn't, you know what? I w I'm going to try it out. I don't even know what the fuck that was. I, I know that Mike said, oh, it was mentioned a few times in the stream. I, like either I forgot about it or I don't know how it works. I think it was probably the former, um, but I will definitely give it a shot. It's going to be fun. You guys get to, like when you're on discord, do you get to talk to each other? Like, I mean, I can hear you and you can hear me. It's going to be fun. I think that's a fun thing. Michael Ferrer says, I'm here for the talking. That's cool, man. And I'm glad that you are. Okay. I'm gonna christen your 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 newborn because I really appreciate your your candor. Scotty Boy Rule says, "Jay, I like your action figures on the wall. Thank you, man. There's quite a few. You guys only see those. Um, uh, so those are those are Marvel Selects and a couple of Marvel Legends thrown in there for good mix. Um, actually, those Marvel Legends that I have, I I picked up when I was like." I had to be like 16, 17. I don't, I don't remember at Walmart on a random choice. I was like, yeah, those are cool. Cause I like daredevil and Kingpin and captain American red skull. 
Um, but there's a lot more around the room of Marvel Select figures. I love Marvel's like Marvel Select to me is like the superior company. Uh, even though I know that people love Marvel Legends, Marvel Legends is incredible. They have a huge um, cast of characters that they that they get to use. I actually bought Quasar uh, recently. I know you guys like who the fuck is Quasar? He's cool as fuck. Quasar is badass. Wendell Vaughn. I'm a Marvel Comics nerd. Wendell Vaughn uh, is awesome. Quasar is awesome. And I bought the I bought the figure. But anyhow, I shouldn't go too far into what I'm saying. Um, Will R. Wine says, hey, Jay, what's that thing on the wall? Yeah, <laughs> it's the thing. You silly goof. Actually, the thing right there. Dude, I am so like they're like okay. I want to open these up so bad. I just don't have the room to really display them. Some of them I really would love to open, but the thing he looks so cool. I would love to like pose him and make him like you know like in a really cool like action pose. Uh, but he's badass. I love that particular Marvel select. I also love um, Apocalypse up there. <laughs> I can't figure out right there. Apocalypse is badass. I would love to do that. Um, there's a lot of um, uh, the Marvel selects that I would I would love to open and be all crazy. But anyhow, Sutter Gillette says I might get a Discord just to join and shoot the shit with y'all. Can't wait uh, for October, Jay. Yeah, man, it's gonna be awesome meeting you, man. Sutter Gillette is a fucking legend. If you guys don't know, Sutter Gillette. Gillette, the best a man can get. Gillette, he's a legend among legends. Sutter Gillette is like a myth. You don't even know if he's real or not. But then you see the evidence, you're like, he's real. He's the hardest drinker of all time. He's the, like, he's he's literally like, he's like fucking Frank Castle, the Punisher. He shows up, he destroys shit, and then he disappears back into the smoke and darkness. That's what Sutter Gillette is. <laughs> and I, I want to meet that man. I want to like shake his hand and be like, "Dude, you're you're a fucking myth. You're a legend." <laughs> That's 100. I'm still waiting on Sutter to show up in the Patreon stream to just take us all down. Yeah, dude. Yeah. With his drinking prowess. Um. Okay, we'll jump right back into the list here. Jay, what's your number seven? Okay, so my number seven is going to be. Uh, and I was hesitant about putting this on the list because, but it's going to be eight millimeter with Nicholas Cage. Mm. Um, I didn't see that in there at all. Yeah, it was a '90s movie, and the reason why I was like worried about it because I like it's more thriller, which I get. But eight millimeter to me is like the most realistic horror movie to ever exist. Uh, the very fact what the mission is for Nicolas Cage as a PI, private investigator, to go out and find the evidence to help this child that was in a snuff film, uh, you know, or the family of, of this child that was in a snuff film, like, it, it, like, and it's got also got, um, Joaquin Phoenix in it as well. This movie's fucking terrifying in the fact that this literally, this literally probably happens all the time. This happens all the time. Police don't follow up on it. It's not got a lot of national attention. Uh, and then it just kind of goes by the wayside but they focused on this one particular story in the idea that, again, Nicolas Cage is a private investigator. He gets a case where um, a daughter a daughter has gone missing. The mother is concerned. And he goes out and he, and he starts looking for her. But in looking for her, he discovers a nefarious network of disgusting-ass human traffickers. And, like, shit you read about on the dark web. Like, you know, the red rooms and all that shit. This movie makes you feel nasty. And it, like for that reason alone, I think it's scary. I, I think it's 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 one of Nicolas Cage's better performances ever. And 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 you have to fucking take a shower afterwards. You look and feel like uh, Joaquin Phoenix in this movie. He works in a dildo shop, meaning a sex <laughs> shop, and and you feel like that. You feel like this grody ass fucking uh, voyeur when you watch this movie because it doesn't. It almost crosses the line where you're watching a fucking body cam footage. Like, not that it's shot that way, but it feels like that. You know, like you're, 
like you're witnessing something that you shouldn't be witnessing. Like, mm -hmm. am I going to jail for this? Like, you feel like you're going to jail for watching it. But yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and, and again, the idea, and it's not a legend. I mean, I know that a lot of people are like, oh, well, it's a legend. Snuff films exist. Real life snuff films yeah. fucking exist. I, to uh, I would totally count that as a horror movie. If it was in the list that we were working, uh, it was in the horror list that we were, I totally would have had it in mind. Because I, I, I could totally see that as a horror movie. Yeah. It's fucked well, up. I, I think the... I think one of the most pivotal moments in that movie, like, and the one that really like churned it back to reality and really got you, was when he called the mom after discovering the fate of the of the daughter, and he starts crying on the phone, and he's like, "Just give me permission, yeah, just say it's okay." Like, it's so. And again, I might have ruined this movie for by saying that, but dude, this movie, no, it's, it's so yeah. the atmosphere of this movie, the acting of this movie. The the complete uh, sur um, surreal surreal type of um, nature of this movie puts you in a place that you don't want to be, yeah. and it's fucking good. That's a fucking amazing. If you guys haven't seen Eight Millimeter, you got to get on that shit, man. That's an all timer fucking Nicholas Cage. Hey, did you hear they're doing a Lord of War sequel by the way with Nicholas Cage in it? They're gonna are do they a doing a, a sequel to it? Yeah, I'll watch it too. Yeah. I think it, that that's a movie that that'd be great. Sequel. Yeah, I'd love to watch that. Yeah. 100%. Uh, my number seven is going to be Arachnophobia, which, by ah, the way, wow. I believe it will be either tomorrow or the next day. Jay and I uh, did a review in person for that together as a Patreon fun. review. Fucking great time. I think we did a great job on the review. I think you guys will enjoy that. Um, Arachnophobia is a movie that I'm telling you, like, you hear about it and you, like maybe you've seen it before, but unless you watch it recently, mm -hmm. The way I see that movie now, and we'll talk about it in the review that comes up tomorrow, the next day. But like, it's it's a fucking poltergeist level fucking great movie. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the horror of spiders jumping on you, as scary as that is. But the movie is entertaining. It's got fucking dynamics to it. It is a fucking. It's a. It's it's almost a fucking ten out of ten. It's an amazing goddamn movie. It's fucking ten. A fucking ten. Fucking ten. We uh, like bacon from Varsity Blues. <laughs> horribly fucking scarring man if you're scared of spiders so many scenes they did such yeah. a it's so underrated arachnophobia fucking rules man mm -hmm. i love it and jeff daniels <laughs> it is so funny. good the best part is is watching jeff daniels basically do what he did in uh a dumb and dumber because with the spider stuff he's like oh god <laughs> it was like him taking the yeah. shit on the toilet when he's like oh <laughs> you know it's fucking yeah amazing. well you know you're absolutely right uh completely underrated nobody talks about it and and john can't uh, not john candy uh john goodman uh, john goodman fucking yeah. amazing in that he goes uh what should we do the woods rotted out get rid of old wood get new wood <laughs> <laughs> it's so good man it's so good and, and really julian uh, julian sands which we all hope that uh he's found uh amazing 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 movie I, I said um, arachnobia. <laughs> Arachnophobia. Yeah, arachnobia will do it. Um. Uh, <laughs> so uh, my number six is going to be uh, Scream. Oh, that's fucking long. Yeah, it, it ain't going to make my top five, y'all. It ain't going to make my top I'll five, y'all. It just ain't going to do it. I, I love Scream uh, for the fact that it was a new and different approach to horror and Wes Craven was again, we've mentioned how, how much of a master Wes Craven is uh, in introducing these new horror elements and these new thematic approaches to horror. And he did do this in scream a hundred percent. Definitely. The idea that he's basically using tropes that were in the horror movies in the movie to tell the story. Absolutely. He was great. I feel like scream is good. I, I just feel like it's oversold a lot. Um, I don't, and again, he, the ghost face character is in the enchilons of, uh, of legend, no doubt. But if you're going to tell me, is, is it scarier than Freddy Krueger or Jason or Michael Myers or Pinhead or, or no, I don't, again, there was also, and I, and maybe it's tainted by the fact that scream went on further than it should have, and that it tainted the character or the actual idea of what scream was supposed to be in the idea that it's like. Well, now it's just kind of like, uh, okay, were they supernatural? Were they not? Or, okay, well, Stu might be alive. The motherfucker had a TV dropped on his fucking face. He was electrocuted. But he might be alive. I mean, it's kind of stupid at the same time. Because the whole idea of Scream was it was supposed to be real, uh, like a realistic approach 
to what would super horror fans do in a situation where they could where they could be these villains and go and kill and stab people and now it's like well if Stu survived like okay well, i okay, mean so well you can't knock the movie for that because in the movie Stu doesn't survive technically no but the, everybody that, no like, i'm saying everybody has talked about the idea of Stu surviving the idea of scream was perfect because they're just regular fucking psycho people uh-huh. that took the idea of horror movies too far and they recreated scenes from iconic movies then you end it you end it because it's perfect the idea that Stu could be alive because a fucking tv fell on his face and he somehow survived electrocution from a tv that weighed fucking 65 pounds that fell on his face and smashed it like a pancake the movie doesn't hint at that though like that's just a no i'm saying like the idea that i'm not saying they hinted at that but people that are continuing that line of thinking there's no way i know and I respect it. That's fine. I mean, your hero is like Stu was a great character, but I just I feel like Scream was great for what it was, but Scream should have ended with Scream One, and that's my opinion. I always thought Scream Two was great, Scream Three was great because they introduced the Creed What If song. But at the end of the day, I, I feel like Scream was was a one hit kind of movie. It, it definitely gave the resurgence of horror that we needed. It was the Nirvana uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit. And then they kept on fucking coming out with songs. And then you're like, all right, we get it. You 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 changed the genre. You you came out and you did it. But at the same time, I don't know. But Scream, again, it was number six. It's it's still in my top ten. It's almost top five, but it was in my top ten. Fair enough, Miko Chaka. Fair enough. I'm ironically, my number six is gonna be Scream too. <laughs> That's weird that those, those lined up the way they did. Yeah, you have uh, time. Yeah, whatever. Just gonna be Scream Two. I love this fucking movie. I think that that Scream Two ruled. It was. It, it, it takes place just a year after the original Scream. They barely had any time to write it, and yet it was like it, that. Scream Six reminds me a lot of Scream Two, whereas it was just cool. Like mm-hmm. there was just a fun, different vibe to it. It had just the there there the same the same group of people. They're in college now. It has. Uh, it doesn't. It's. 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 Some people think. Some people say that Scream Two is better than Scream, and I. I think they're crazy, Ooh, but I respect wow, it. Yeah. Crazy. But like, I still love Scream Two. Amazing soundtrack. Best soundtrack of the franchise, no doubt about it. And mm. um, just uh, they did a great job with all the characters. If Scream Two would have sucked, this franchise wouldn't exist today. And I thought that that movie ruled. It was fun. Jerry Ooh. O'Connell as Derek was great. Fucking goddamn Timothy Oliphant uh, did an amazing it's job fun. with it. Uh, I love the movie. It was like Scream, but it was just, they they just, it, a, it did an amazing thing with the meta version of it, where it was like, they even talked about sequels not being better. They took the meta idea of Scream, talking about horror movies and stuff like that, and really upped it and did this thing where they talked about sequels in the movie that they were doing with it. Uh, the Cotton Weary thing, the Gale thing, like uh, as much as Scream is, is bar none, no doubt, the best movie of the franchise for me i think scream 2 was really important in that it was such a good movie it made it possible for the franchise to survive on so i fucking love scream 2 man i love it with yeah, all scream my heart is fun part. scream 2 is fun um i just feel like again uh, i don't know man i'm always gonna be that codger i'm always gonna be like it was unnecessary <laughs> i'm just gonna be that guy be like hey you know what i don't think it was necessary and I mean, I, you, you, could, you could say a lot about for a lot of the other movies. You could say, it like, well, was it necessary for Nightmare on Elm Street? Well, Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger was a goddamn uh, disembodied spirit fucking thing that lived in your dreams. Jason, uh, maybe you could make the argument for Jason. Michael Myers, di- uh, totally different. But, man, I, I, I like, I love Tim the Oliphant in Scream 2. I, I, like, for me, I, I feel like if you're not going to end it at Scream 1, fucking end it at Scream 2. Okay, so you got the copycat killer out of the way. Now be done with it because now it's just, it doesn't disagree. make it like you're going to fucking outlaw the fucking scream mask. Like cops in today's society would fucking shoot a motherfucker in the face. If he's running around with a knife and possibly with a scream mask. On. Halloween did the same thing though. I mean, they were not really, I mean, but, but you're looking four. at Michael Myers, Michael Myers. It's okay. But they, again, we've also talked about the idea in Haddonfield. They should have outlawed the mask. That would have made a total different fucking scenario. And that would have made total sense. In Haddonfield, because again, Michael Myers was supernatural. That gives you a lot more leeway to play with, not all this other shit with Scream. I feel like yeah. if, anyway, 
but yeah, I like Scream too. I do. It's not it's not um, on my list, but I do enjoy it. I do like Scream too. If they're like, "Hey, you're gonna watch a sequel to Scream," uh, Scream Two is a good way to go. It's good um, time, Danny. My number five is gonna be The Sixth Sense. Um, you got to put it up there for the fact for what it did. I mean, The Sixth Sense itself. I mean, you 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 talk about ghosts and 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 goblins and spooky shit going on in the house. The Sixth Sense actually brought the mainstream audience to a new level with what um, M. Night Shyamalan did uh, with that movie. He didn't just introduce horror. He didn't just introduce horror in that film. He introduced compassion and heart and and, and, a, and a twist ending. He's actually the, the fucking goddamn Leonardo da Vinci of the twist ending that every creator in Hollywood tries to perfect after The Sixth Sense. Because would you, again, for me anyway, I mean, I'm sure there were other twisty endings in other films, but the first time I'd ever seen the sixth sense, I'd never seen an ending like that ever <clears throat> where you were like, Holy shit. And it all just clicks together at the end. And then you feel like this emotional, like tug um, at the very, very end of the movie. When um, Haley Joel Osment is talking to his mom and he's telling her grandma says hi. And, and she wants you to know, I watched you from the rafters do your, performance and he couldn't have known that unless he was actually psychic and then you know even then he was like oh yeah the the girl that just died up there in the wreck is right next to my window i i fucking loved it dude i the sixth sense is it, it changed the game in a lot of ways like scream did at, at least in the ghost genre like you got to tell a story that's interesting that's unique that's that comes from a different angle because if you're talking about ghost movies before this, it was always booger monsters that hide in the closet. And then you, <laughs> you do an exorcist thing and then they fucking leave. This was like, I, I think that this was the first movie that I ever seen that like actually treated ghosts as humans that have passed. They just needed help. Yeah. And, and I loved it. And Bruce Willis was fucking phenomenal. I mean, come on. And on Donnie Wahlberg, what, dude, his, his first fucking performance ever. Donnie Wahlberg shows up and, and knocks it out of the park at the beginning of the movie. It was so good. Donnie Wahlberg was so good in that beginning of the film that nobody even knew it was fucking new kids on the block. Donnie Wahlberg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't have six cents in my list because it wasn't listed under Amazon as horror under the parameters. Of yeah. It, I had to look like, at it. Yeah. I, yeah. I probably wouldn't. I honestly, I probably, I, I like the sixth sense, but it's it just, it's like some movies get you and some movies don't like six sense never got me, but like I totally get why it would be at this list for sure. Uh, otherwise. Um, oh yeah. Wait, but, uh, the evil resident, uh, Tony Collette killed it always to her acting in that car. Is she's so good. good. Yes, dude. Tony Collette, she's so good. Collette. I forgot about her. She's amazing. She goes from that to hereditary. Holy shit. Yeah. And again, uh, bringing that up because it matters for this next pick. Uh, again, I'll, uh, the only parameter I had for the list was it has to be listed on Amazon yeah. as horror, which some people are going to say this is not a horror movie, but that's just that's the list. I went with. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I sent you. That's the only that's the only parameters I had for the list. And it was under there. So I went with it. It's that fucking good. Uh, my number five is Blade. Um, <laughs> and, and I, mean, know, I, all, I don't argue with count, it. It is a horror movie because look at this movie, like the things that they did in the movie. Uh, a, it was a vampire movie. B, it had a lot of gore in it. I mean, from the opening scene, fucking mm -hmm. blood's coming out of the goddamn sprinklers, right? And then also when they burn that dude with the flashlight and he's like, eh! <laughs> she's holding that fucking spotlight on him. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, Pearl. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's so great. Gnarly. Yeah. Blade's one of the fucking greatest goddamn horror or greatest goddamn uh it's, superhero it's, movies of all time one of the 100%. greatest action movies yes. of all time yes and i think you'd call it uh at least in the in, in the argument for some of the greatest horror horror movies of all time because the the themes that it dealt with how dark it was how twisted it was yeah um i i fucking blade kicked ass it was fun as shit to watch it had all the horror i mean if you yep. look at in, if you can look at any other vampire movie and call it a horror movie i think you have to include blade in that because it has well, we so many exactly of those horror much elements. Dimes. yeah <laughs> some motherfuckers always trying to ice skate uphill dude it's 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 got some Are of the best lines ever line? dude, yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah dude uh frost to me you're just another dead vampire <laughs> and then he hangs up the horns like fuck dude yeah. uh, well actually um uh 
who's the guy that played Deacon Frost? Uh, Stephen Dorff. Stephen Dorff came out. His best yeah, role, in my opinion. Amazing. He actually yeah. came out and said, "Oh, I heard they're remaking Blade." He's like, "Why? We already did it perfect." And he's right. <laughs> he's fucking yeah, right. he's like, and, uh, yeah. like he's not being an asshole. Like, why the no. fuck would you remake perfection? It's already there. Mm-hmm. I mean, you 100%. don't need to remake the fucking movie. Just start a sequel. Yeah, but hundred anyway. percent. Uh, my number four is going to be uh, <laughs> and again. It's so fucking far on Mike's list. Mine's Halloween Six. Fair, I I, yeah. I respect. Uh, and appreciate like again, I, I've already went over earlier in the stream about how much uh, like we rented this film. How many times I broke it, and again, these this list is about films that we loved as you know growing up in the nineties. Um, I loved Halloween Six. I thought it was so fucking good. Halloween Five was such a fucking turd. Halloween five was the Batman and Robin of the franchise and Halloween six was the Batman begins. In my opinion, it was the one that brought Michael back. It was the one that said, guess what? Michael was a turd and and a, a shithole. Um, he was the Andrew Tate of Halloween five. And we, we brought him back to the championship levels that we need to bring him back to in Halloween six. And I like, of course the story is, is is subpar. I, I get that. Uh, Paul Rudd was one of his first movies, or it was his first movie. It's not great on the acting levels uh, at all on the on the peripheral. But the, Michael Myers himself, I feel like this was this was like when fucking Lewis and Clark discovered the goddamn uh, uh, Mississippi <laughs> River. Like it was like when Lewis, like it was like it was a discovery, man. Like you saw Michael unhinged. You saw a truly violent Michael. Especially the hot, the the, uh, the the mental asylum scene when the with the uh, flickering lights. Uh, I this movie, man, and I know you know. I feel like it's the new nightmare. A lot of people call Freddy Krueger's the new nightmare, um, the the rebirth of the uh, of the Nightmare on Elm Street series. I feel like Halloween Six was the rebirth of the of the Halloween series. You look at what they did with Halloween 5, right? They left it on a fucking note. Like, what the fuck is going on? It took a fan. It took a fucking fan to write a story and send it send it into Hollywood to a cod for this thing to get made. And thank God for him because it, it didn't just bring back the Halloween mystique. It brought back the brutality of Michael. Or the, or the idea of Michael being scary as fuck. And I loved it, dude. I loved everything about Halloween 6. And, and again, I broke the fucking tape. We rented this movie so much when I was younger. It literally, they were like, oh, are you going to rent, uh, what are you renting today? It's like, oh, Halloween 6 is definitely one of them. Yeah, you'd think we'd just buy it, but we didn't. We just kept renting it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, yeah but it's like, it's $20, yeah. but we probably spent like 58 <laughs> Yeah, 100%, man. 100%. I respect it. I respect it. I have no fuck calls that not not a bit whatsoever. I love it. I love the fact that I'm glad that you fucking put it in there because it got the respect it deserves because that movie is underrated as shit. A movie you mentioned before, uh, The People Under the Stairs is my Ooh, I four. like it. I like it being that high, though. It's sexy and I enjoy it. Dude, this movie is just something special. It's just something different. And I just once again want to reiterate, I don't think we appreciate the fucking greatness of Wes Craven. In my mm-hmm. opinion, the greatest horror director of all time. Fucking Nightmare on Elm Street. Goddamn scream. People under the stairs. Uh, a house on the left. Fucking hills have eyes. Wes fucking Craven, man. People under the stairs. He wasn't afraid to go and tell a story about his urban community, about all the stuff that was happening. It was the perfect movie that that told mm-hmm. a political story. And we always ask for it. Like, hey, stop ham-fisting us, woke storylines and stuff like yeah. this. This was the co- type of movie like it is not, smart. Uh, smart. Like the- like the original Ramiro. Night of Living Dead, it yeah. said something about classism and all that stuff like that without fucking forcing it. It made it scary. It made it funny. It made it haunting. It made it creepy as fuck. And again, like we talk, Everett McGill, or if I'm saying his name right, uh, the mom and the dad, the scariest part about the whole oh, fucking movie. Yeah. It's entertaining. It's 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 funny. It's scary as anything else. It's got this fucked up, strange dynamic. It's a story you've never heard of in your life. I mean, this crazy story about these people literally living under the steps. Yeah. And the fucking, I, I, it's, it is a one of one. There's nothing else fucking like it in the world. No matter how many people might yeah. try to c- recreate, it's, it's, there's no movie like people under the stairs, man. Nope. And, and it has it all. It is a fucking almost Does it not feel movie. I love it. And I'm glad it's in your top five. Does it not feel like a um like a creepy pasta? Like sure. A, uh, like, one really the, like one of the first creepy pastas ever. Like yeah. the idea that it could be real. The idea layers, that it could be fucking layers. real is scary. 
Yeah. It's just, it's, it's so fucking good. And underrated. I still think it's as, as much as it's appreciated as a classic, I still think it's underrated. Yeah. It has everything you want in a fucking movie, man, especially in a horror movie. For sure. For sure. Um, my number three is going to be, um, I, I feel like this is the goddamn he man of vampire movies. Dust till dawn is going to come in swinging that dick and saying, who wants to suck it? Okay, Bro, drinks on me. Down. Drinks on me. You better drink up, hard drinkers. George Clooney style. Dust Till Dawn was the first vampire movie I ever watched when I was a kid. I, I was probably like uh, probably 13 or 14 years old. I remember when uh, my uncle came and picked me and my brother up, and we went to stay in his house in Richmond. Uh, it's a town in Kentucky. Uh, and his wife was out uh, out of out of town, and we 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 set up watching horror movies, and he he happened to rent Dust Till Dawn, which was a new movie, and I watched that movie, and I fucking fell in love, dude. It was like dropping the Punisher, the Punisher into a fucking vampire movie, or Bruce Campbell from Army of Darkness into a vampire movie, and just like saying fuck it. This movie was amazing it was acted so well it, it had the horror it had the scares and if you can find anything less of a horror movie for this then fuck it i <laughs> i love this movie dude this movie and your beer uh, tastes it, like piss that's uh, because we piss in it <laughs> yeah uh yeah it, it's a long night it's got one of the best best openings ever the soundtrack is not that great, but the, the main title song is awesome. Uh, again, you look at this movie, right? It's got George Clooney as the ultimate sexy badass that he is, right? Taking on fucking vampires with tribal Best tattoos all the way up his fucking arm and then onto his neck. And then this fucking guy gets cast in Joel Schumacher's Batman and Robin. And you're like, what the fuck happened? Like, Best it's still mind blowing to me. But anyway, Best Coast Clooney role ever, a hundred percent. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. Hard drinkers drink hard. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I it has, it's my number no. three too. I just went in. Oh, okay, that. yeah, okay, yeah. So you me, can talk. Me, we can talk about. Sure. We can talk about this together because yeah. who was the main? Who was the father? Uh, Harvey, uh, Harvey Keitel. Keitel. Harvey yeah. Keitel, dude, the father in this film as well. Yeah. So, dude, this movie. I've watched this movie so many times, and you you can't get sick of it. To be honest, no. you can't get sick of it. Not even as a horror fan. If you're just uh, if you're just like, I want a I want a cool action movie. This has got that for you in space with titties. It's and a tale. It's fun too. for you. It's a tale of two stories, man. Like uh, the first half is this badass fucking action movie. You can't call it buddy cop because it was so dark. Kind of the shit that they were doing. But it was a movie that like, like much like Game of Thrones, like Game of Thrones season one, it ends and they kill Sean Bean, right? Spoiler alert. Mm. Uh, and you go, oh my God, they'll fucking do anything. I don't know what to expect. The first time you watch Dust Till Dawn it's like that because these guys are actual bad guys. They're bad guys. They yeah. presented them to you as though they're the coolest fucking things ever, mainly because of George Clooney's like, you be cool. And you're rooting for them, but then all of yeah. a sudden, Rick, uh, like fucking uh, Quentin Tarantino's character, starts like having these weird it's sexual You're like, yeah. wait, these guys aren't good. It's it's a movie that like questions your fucking standards as a human being, and then all of a sudden, you got this crime movie you're watching. Halfway through, hey, we're just gonna turn it into a goddamn fucking uh, drive-through movie. It's gonna be a fucking crazy uh drive through grimy ass movie Selma Hayek is a fucking stripper Ooh, uh she so, has yeah. a cock gun it's it's a fuck it's a, it, Dude, if a movie you know that could scene? be a firework this movie would be a fucking horror movie firework she's yeah. just popping off fucking everywhere you don't know what to do <laughs> it's a cherry bomb in the toilet yeah you ever seen <laughs> the, not that not in the bad way but you, you remember that scene where she was pouring a beer down her fucking knee off her toe Christ. into his fucking mouth I was like what the fuck is that strip bar i ain't never been uh but no I, I like dude i mean i'm glad like it's weird like again me and mike didn't go over our list at all we both put no. dust till dawn as our number first three. time we matched up actually yeah in in all of the 1990s horror movie <laughs> you cannot tell me that dust till dawn isn't the premier holy shit i paid 50 dollars a month to get the hbo oh. special yeah. fucking vampire of the 1990s yeah you can't and then <laughs> that's right it reminds me actually of desperado at the beginning where they're playing the song it's like <laughs> 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 it's 
<laughs> yeah. Though. Even though, like, it's uh, crazy. Well, it's like it, Desperado on horror yeah. steroids. You know? I know that uh, Robert Rodriguez directed this film, and then uh, wasn't I think he uh, Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino helped, I think he helped write, write the script. But dude, this yeah. is like a perfect storm. Like you got Robert Rodriguez, right, and Quentin Tarantino working on a film together, and Quentin Tarantino is co-starring in the film. Tell me that you can't find a better fucking combo right there. Nothing like. But, and again. No matter what you fucking say, George Clooney has never done something as cool as his role in this fucking movie. Tom Ogata like, says, y'all wanted to be George Clooney's character. Yeah, dude, I swear to God, I don't have any tattoos. I wanted to get a tribal tattoo. <laughs> and the funny thing, it's like the biggest douchebag tribal I know, tattoo I know. Imagine, but on I, yeah. him, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I didn't right. know I was going to be the guy from Steal My Sunshine if the world <laughs> goes dark. If you steal my steal sunshine. My sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, if you get a, a tribal tattoo now, it's like, yeah, you're a whore. That's but uh, anyway, uh, my number two is going to be, um, we'll go uh, quick and easy, and, and and we'll just get in there. No the problem. The point, no fake in. Uh, it, like it's going to be bacon. seven with See, rap now, Jay, and... I sent you a list of, of fucking parameters that we were going to go off of together, and you went outside of it, and now our list are... I have... No, movies. because I Seven is a fucking horror movie. But it was based on IMDb-listed horror movies. That was the point. And now we have totally different lists. I would have had 8mm in there. I'd have had Seven in there. I'd have had fucking Six Cents in there. Now it's all fucked up. What I Seven used was, I used the idea one. of the IMDb, and I went through all of them, and then I was like, well, I thought of a few others, but again, you all could, in your wise uh, wisdom, could say Seven's a thriller. I have to put Seven on the fuck. I mean, there's, I saw someone earlier saying Seven's gotta be on the goddamn list. It's got to I, be. I have no problem with Seven being on the list, but we were going off the same list, so Seven would have been in my list, and now it's all fucked up. You could anyway, you could seven have, rules. You, you could have some one. I would totally understand seven being in there. Well, 100%. it's in there because uh, again, the idea, Kevin 100%. Spacey, Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman. I don't really need to explain the fucking plot to you guys. You guys know. Like it again, you could do I didn't I wanted to put fear at one point in the film or in in the list, but I can't. Because you know, it, I feel like fear is too much of a Fuck, thriller. Fear would have gone on my list too if it was on the list. Well, I feel like I fear is movie. too much of a thriller. Seven is like actually, I feel like it dips too much into the horror versus uh fear, in my opinion. But apparently, I'm done. I, I don't know. Apparently, I went outside the fucking scopes. <laughs> yes, I don't know. Clearly. Well, apparently, I don't know. I feel like seven is a movie that you have to put on the 90s horror list. I didn't put Silence of the Lambs. I, I was going to, and there was another, uh, uh, well, uh, Fear, and there was another one. Because I feel like I, I looked at the IMDb, the list, the, the Jack, actual. It's not your parameters, Mike. It's Jay's. I sent Jay an email saying, pick from this fucking list so we have the same parameters. Well, maybe I That's misread it. I don't know. I was like, here, here's a, an idea. Here's a starter cap for you, like a fucking pog collection, and then you can go out. <laughs> I looked at the same list and then I, I didn't see a couple. I took time Maybe. to find the list to send you the list. Well, I mean, I could have gone. I mean, it's IMDb, but I'm saying I could. I should have maybe like sent you an email. About it's fine. I'm just I'm like, just explaining why seven's not in my list because I thought we were going off the same list. It's fine. I don't care. I'm just well. I mean, why. Here's the, well, actually, it's not like one of my fucking top. Well, five here's the thing. Movies of all well, time. here's the thing. You could actually you could actually say seven could be considered a thriller. There's a lot of people I would count do it as consider it. if we weren't going off that list. Yeah, okay. But I'm saying you Either can way. say seven, but you can say thriller slash horror. There's a lot of movies. I mean, eight millimeter is another one. I didn't even want to put it in my list necessarily, but I can look at it and say it's a it's a horror movie. Like I was looking at movies that scared me. My number one uh, I won't say that. Never mind. I won't say that. I won't go that far. I didn't go. You can change it up in the middle if you want. I mean, you could if you want to change some stuff. It's fine. I would have to. Yeah. No, it's fine. It's fine. Seven. I I agree with seven. If it was a, on that list, to totally be number two. That's a great choice. That's a great pick. I appreciate That's it. A great pick for that. It's like it's like picking the uh, the great uh, fucking new item on McDonald's menu, and you're like, was it good? Like, yeah, <laughs> it was good. I, I went with the classic, but I could have gone with the extra. Seven would be in my top five movies of all time 
in the world of any genre. If we were so doing top totally 15 of all choice. movies ever, I don't know about that. In your top five of all For time? Me. Yeah, no, I love fucking In your all-time, all-time Devin list. is the movie that made me fucking fall in love with movies, man. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely mm. it would be. I, I, it would be my top five all-time movies ever. So, anyways. Ooh. Anyway, why... I'll, I'll let why your thing is. I'm just saying, like, I fucking love that movie so much. <laughs> you know, Dan yeah, well, is my I mean, guy. Well, we, yeah, well, we already guy. know. We already know why. It's my... It's it, it's number two on the list. I, I feel like it was a movie that... It took horror to a new level. I mean, we've mentioned a few times on the list about movies that um, reflect real life. And I feel like seven, a, a lot less realistic, in my opinion, than eight millimeter could still happen in, in a very um, contained way. Kevin Spacey was incredible as the uh, antagonist of the film. Brad Pitt. Um, I, I like at before I saw this movie, I thought Brad Pitt was just a pretty dude or whatever. This actually showed me the range of his acting ability. Morgan Freeman was the perfect partner of this. This would be like if um, in Lethal Weapon, if they grew up, <laughs> if they stopped being like yeah, mean weapon, to each yeah. other and they grew up together in the police force and they didn't retire. This would be Mel Gibson and, and uh, what's his name? Sutherland, uh, not Sutherland. Uh, the Danny dude Glover? from Danny Glover. Yeah. Uh, and, and there was there was a real... I feel like I've never... like, And I remember this. I jumped hard as fuck with the, with the scene with the, with, the, with the guy they were starving to death. And he was still alive. God damn. God damn. I just wish this director had taken his talents and, and put it toward Alien 3. But he didn't. That was his first... Oh, I don't know if it was his first. Movie. No, that was his first. Yeah, but he. I'll, I'll, I'll give a pass on him it. to take his. But name that was his He's first. Like, take the... my name off this fucking movie because I did yeah. not direct it because you guys fucking raped it to shit. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, no, it's fucking seven's fucking. It's, 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 that's all timer right there. My <laughs> my number two, and I would, and again, personally, if you ask me, like if you ask me personally, is the crow a horror movie? I'd say mm. you could call it a horror movie. I wouldn't put it in that. That's why I had the the list the way it was, like just so that we didn't decide, but like it was on the list. But like if the crows included in it, it was my number two. Uh, would be the crow Ooh. because like based on movies that are listed on IMDb as horror movies, the fucking crow is an all timer, and it also could be listed in a list that you said movies that never needed a sequel. Like mm -hmm. you were talking about Scream earlier, never a movie that never needed a sequel to Crow, maybe so. never did, especially given everything that happened with it. But the Crow for me was, I mean, it's horrific. Yeah, it, it is horrific in the lines of like, I mean, what's more horrific than you're a guy, you're living in a fucking apartment, and a bunch of fucking pieces of shit come in, rape your girlfriend, kill her, mm -hmm. murder you, you come back from the dead, and then you murder them to fucking shit to smithereens. There's nothing more horrific than that. But I mean, you don't need to talk about the crow. Brandon Lee, uh, a guy who it's almost you could call it Brandon Lee's godfather for a guy who never got the chance to have his Al Pacino career. Like for what happened was, I mean, Brandon Lee was amazing in Showdown Little Tokyo, Rapid Fire. He was on his way to being one of the greatest fucking actors of our time. Like he would have mm. been up there with that. And I, I have no qualms with saying this. Brandon Lee would have succeeded the Jean-Claude Van Dams. He would have succeeded, succeeded the uh, Steven Seagal's and the action heroes. Ooh, he would have been an actual older. fucking dramatic fucking actor that had the fucking stuff. If, if he had, if his, if he had survived this situation and his career progressed, he had it. I really think he had it. And the crow was his best performance in my opinion. Yeah. Um, uh, for an early career that was cut way too short in a movie that was super dark, that was super fucked up, that was based on really heartbreaking, terrible stuff, an amazing yeah. graphic novel, an amazing comic book from James O'Barr. And The Crow is a special, special movie, but it's also super fucking depressing. But yeah, if you count The Crow as a horror movie, it would be number two on my list. Yeah, sure. I would. Uh, I had The Crow early and then i was like it's not for me it wasn't a horror movie it was a, it was a superhero origin type of movie but i could see how people could take it as a horror movie or like a superhero thriller type of movie but 
Yeah, man, The Crow. I mean, Brayden Lee. I wouldn't have included it as a superhero movie or as a horror movie. It, I just thought we yeah, were going to the So that's for the, yeah. I get you. Yeah. But I mean, The Crow itself, I I, I saw it on the list. And I wanted to do it, but I'm, I, I don't, I don't, I never, when I watched that movie, even as a kid, I never saw it as any more than a superhero movie. But at the same time, there are horror elements in it. I feel like they do a more. I think they 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 do more horror elements in the in the sequel than they do in the first one. Yeah, with I mean, uh, with uh, what's his name? Um, fucking uh, nasty boy, <laughs> the bad guy in that. Oh, um, uh, party boy, the, party boy. No, I don't. Remember. Who was the guy in the, in, in the sequel? Uh, grungy guy. Oh, Iggy Pop. Oh, Iggy Pop. He was in the sequel. At least Iggy Pop was in the sequel. Fun Boy. Fun Boy. Yeah. Yeah. Evil Residents, right. Fun Boy was the guy from the fucking, from the crow. Iggy Pop. Yeah. Um, well, I was going off list. Yeah. I saw it. But again, I, I maybe I fucked that up. Maybe I uh, misinterpreted what we were doing. But either way, here we are. What? What? <laughs> How about we get to our number one? I'm confused. I'm confused on what you're talking about. Yeah. What's your number one? Well, my number one's gonna be Blair Witch Project. Oh shit, that's a fucking shocker. Holy well, shit. Well, I feel like if that's you're gonna so change the 90s and if you're gonna make uh like a new genre of horror, you're gonna have to put Blair Witch Project. I mean, everybody gives up the awards to Scream for changing the 90s for horror movies, but I feel like if you're really gonna make the 90s a different genre in horror movies, it's gonna be Blair Witch Project. I mean, from Blair Witch Project, you spawn things like Paranormal Activity. Actually, you spawned every found footage horror film ever after that. Um, and I feel like Blair Witch Project was the was the film was the granddaddy of them all. And if you're not going to have that on your list, and and to be honest with you, it scared the fuck out of me when I was a kid. I remember uh, I wasn't maybe because I wasn't on the internet like as much, but I remember Cody and Mike coming downstairs again. They were the the best viral marketing campaign i've ever seen in my life the internet was new dial-up internet was new and they were the guys that were like forefront on that shit like making it look real had missing posters they had this whole fucking website come help us find these three missing individuals and i saw it and as a kid in my head i was like it's fake but after a while you're like maybe it's fucking real because again i you didn't have access to youtube like right off your fingertips or Google or anything like that. You just had to like rely on like news stories and you didn't hear anything about it. Like then you're like, Oh shit. Is this like one of those types of news stories that are just like buried <laughs> and like nobody's hearing about it because it's in Pennsylvania or where they fucking shot it. I can't remember. Um, and I went and uh, seen it in theaters. Maryland. Yeah. And, and then I went and seen it in the theater and I was like, <sighs> dude, if it, like, like the, the, best thing about that movie is it pulls you in i mean yes it made you motion sickness a hundred percent like you were fucking sick watching the film especially in theaters i think it was me and mike and and a couple of people we saw this opening night uh at the kentucky theater and it made you motion sickness because it was the first of its kind you never there was no stabilizing camera it was no nothing that it was just like a guy running through the the fucking forest and um, the ending was terrible. It was awful. But what it did for horror, uh, like uh, like what it did for horror, I feel like it's equivalent to what Scream did for slasher films. What this did for horror was the same. And it did. It scared the shit out of me because you didn't know if it was real or not. And I remember watching it. I didn't know if it was real or not. And that dude at the end of the movie, he was peeing in the corner. But you watch that shit and you're like, What's going to happen next? It was the first time I'd ever seen a movie where it felt like there was no script. <laughs> I was like, are they releasing fucking police footage? Yeah, it's one of a kind. No fucking doubt about it. 
that was one of a kind. There's no movie, I, and still to this day, I mean, they people have changed things with horror, but there's is there any movie that really did it the way Blair Witch Project did? I don't know. Like, I don't know if there's anybody that did it that fucking hardcore. Um, I don't know. Well, Stephanie doesn't that. think. I don't think the ending was terrible. I think it depends on how you experienced it, honestly. Like, if you were wanting to see the fucking witch, or you're wanting to see something, or if, like, you were cool with that, like, vibe staying the same as it was the entire yeah. two hour running time or whatever beforehand, for sure. I don't know. I don't know why my font got bigger here. I didn't mean for it to at all. Uh, I think everybody knew. Shocker. Big surprise, everybody. Big surprise. Huge surprise. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Might Silk Underwear. Wanted- yeah, this is still underwear. My number one scream. I think that, like, for the 90s, I, I think that scream absolutely without uh, a question. It's just in my opinion, like, like you were saying, like, scream changed things. Uh, Blair Witch Project changed things. Uh, they all they had the same vibe there going on, as whereas like Blair Witch Project did something brand new, scream did something brand new, and they're not comparable in themselves at all. But like, scream changed things, but was also entertaining. It was also fun to watch. It was also, it wasn't just cool, but it was scary. It was, it was the first time horror at the time. I remember growing up, I was like in sixth or seventh grade when this fucking thing came out, man. And like everything before that was always like old slashers and Friday the 13th. And like horror was fucking dead. It was dead. Like, like we were doing stuff with horror, but like, look at, if you go back and look at box, uh, box office emoji or whatever the fuck it's called box office. Yeah. I can't think of the name of it. Box office mojo or whatever. Yeah. And you look at the calendar of horror movies coming out, what was coming out, what was happening in the horror universe at the time. And it was dead. It was nothing like Jason goes to hell came out. We were doing shit. Nothing happened. Scream came out. Wes Craven came out and he changed the fucking horror game. He recreated fucking horror. I mean, to me, it wasn't even just the Nirvana of horror. It was, it was something like that, but like you took a, you took a thing that people could actually be scared of again. People hadn't Mm -hmm. been scared of horror in a long time. And he made a movie that like high schoolers, middle schoolers, whoever could be scared of. It wasn't a supernatural killer. It was a brand new thing where it could be your neighbor. It could be a fucking person you were in class with. Not only did he do that, but it was funny. It was fun. It was entertaining. It was scary. It was gory. It had every fucking amazing thing that horror had to offer. And it had a brand new bite to it. Not only did it have all the things horror had to offer, but it also added a meta spin on it. It was if Scary Movie was a fucking scary horror movie. And Scary Movie did that based on Scream. They went and did all their parodies off of it, and and it bred that, and it bred a whole new genre of horror in a way that nobody in our time, I feel like, has seen. Like, when Halloween came out, it bred the slashers and all that stuff like that. But Scream, when it came out, bred... I know what you did last summer, disturbing behavior, the faculty, fucking all these movies were bred off of what Scream had created. It just, to me, it is the fucking, it is a, it's a, Scream to me is one of the top three moments in horror history. Like, I don't think mm. anything has really changed the game of horror the way that Scream did. And not only did it do that, but it's timeless. It's entertaining no matter what age you are, no matter who you are, no matter when you go back to watch it. You could be a a person who grew up watching 70s horror movies. You could appreciate Scream. You could be a fucking 12-year-old. You can go back and appreciate Scream. It's rewatchable as fucking Jim Carrey's best movies as Liar Liar or whatever. It's rewatchable. It has it all to me. Scream is my favorite. It's just it's it's my favorite horror movie of all time. It's my favorite horror movie that's ever been made. Yeah, and the way movie. that it just transcends everything. I fucking yeah. love that movie. It's a 10 out of 10. You knew it would be my number one. I knew it'd be my number one. Greg I think the chat knew it would be your number one. So everyone knew it was there was no question. Yeah. And that's why it's my number eleven favorite horror movie of all time. I love oh, uh thanks. yeah, I think Scream is fun. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like it's one of those movies, man. Like it, like it was really fun for its time, and uh, I appreciate what they did. But man, you know, I don't know what it was, man. When I watch it, and I, 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 I enjoy it, of course. Uh, Ghostface is a great character, but um, do you not feel that Scream, like if Scream never had a continuation of the fucking story? Which makes sense. It feels like a a one off type of story that makes total sense, and it's scary as fuck because of the idea 
of two crazed goddamn horror fans recreating the movies and killing people, and then it's over. Of course, you're gonna have copycats, but that shit would be dealt with in like five seconds in the real mm -hmm. world. I feel like How it's you... one of those movies that should just be like one movie and done. What would be the what's the difference between that and Halloween or or Hellraiser? Or because they're supernatural movie? beings, they can which is what makes Scream so, so special is because it's because not the like ghost, all those other movies. But they're not got again. You have copycats. That's fun, but then it gets continuously. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. There would be cops in the real world that would shoot the motherfuckers quick. In the idea of Michael Myers or. Freddy Krueger or Jason Voorhees, these are supernatural beings that can exist beyond the movies. I mean, that's why I always felt like Wes Craven hit it out of the fucking park with the first one, because it's like, that makes total fucking sense. And then even the second one, I'm like, I give that a pass because, of course, there would be people that would try to copycat and recreate that whole fucking thing. But then that once that happens, it's like, okay, now... A national emergency is happening. They're going to outlaw the fucking screen mask. And if you're wearing one and you're trying to threaten people, they're probably not going to ask questions pretty... They're, they're going to be like, I'll just take you in handcuffs and fucking put well, you for, in jail. Well, in that essence, though, you could say the same thing. And that, a national emergency is happening. This guy in Haddonfield is supernatural and he's murdering people. Why aren't we calling the FBI? This guy in Crystal they, Lake... Well, they did. I mean, people. Why don't we call the FBI? They did. They did. In, uh, in Jason Goes to Hell, they called the CIA and the motherfucker that is supernatural. What, like the, 11th, the 11th movie or whatever? Yeah, but, I, don't, uh, I don't remember which one it was, but... It's the same and, then, thing. and of course, I mean, that was in a different time. You're talking about the 70s or early 80s when we didn't have the technology. I'm just saying... The difference Jessica's is hell was in the nineties. Jessica goes to hell, yes. And then you're talking about the early eighties when they called the cops in and they're like, Hey, Crystal Lake is apparently haunted. Good luck explaining to a cop this fucking lake is haunted by a fucking ghost of a of a boy that drowned and that wears a mask and, and kills people. I'm saying like scream one, and again, I, I'm just I'm only saying this because. I do agree. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't agree with it's my number one. But Scream 1 was so fucking dynamic and definitive as far as like it recreating the genre of horror. I I agree with that. But I feel like anything after that was just, I don't know. I never liked it. I, I always felt like it was like, like I could get the Michaels and the Jasons and, 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 and the others. I can get all that. I feel like you kind of like tarnished the legacy a little bit when you keep doing sequels to it. I mean, I don't know. Like Halloween Resurrection Resurrection exists, but I mean, we're not taking, we're not, we're not. Well, that was Halloween a shitty one, but I mean, I feel like if you look, but if you look at Halloween and then you look at Halloween two, you look at Halloween four, which we've also ranked that higher than Halloween one. I feel like that just adds on to the, the uh, legend of Michael Myers other than again, but it is what it is. But I agree. A stream one is, is like, I didn't put it in my top five, but I would like it was number six on my list. I think it almost made it. Yeah, that's uh, that's fine. I'm just saying, like, I mean, you can't be like, hey, some of the sequels suck, so the original wasn't as great. Because then you could say Jason goes to hell. You could say Freddy's dead. No, you could say I, Halloween I, Resurrection. You could say you could pick any franchise and be like, hey, some no, of the that's sequels true. sucked. That's true. But the I was original. just saying, Scream, like Scream, felt like such, like such a unique movie. I guess, in my opinion, it was. Like the, the original movie was so fucking unique and like it transcends over generations. The first one forever. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's a special fucking weird thing that hasn't been recreated as much as they tried to. Would you like want it to be recreated? Summer. No, like, I mean, they've tried to, I know what you did last summer. The fact, like all these movies have always tried to recreate scream yeah. and like, nobody's been able to. Like, who has been able to create the vibe of Scream but do it better? No one. It's never happened. It doesn't exist. It's mm. a Fugazi. A Fugazi. You got to jack off six, <laughs> time in the six yeah. times in the bathroom. Um, where did we leave off with the super titties? Let me see. Um, uh, I think I, lo I got lost in the... Uh, uh, no, no, I'm caught up. Here we go. do, 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 Mm. I think we're almost there. I'm almost there. I'm going to come. 
Wait for it. I am going to come. <clears throat> Will says, uh, but I know what you did last summer is a good one. Man, I, I can't. <laughs> I can't go with it. I can't go there with you. I can't. It's uh, it, like it, it, it was so bad when it came out. Uh, well, maybe not when it came out, but like watching it as an adult, even watching it as a kid, like I'd rather watch Scream. Like it was obvious a ripoff of Scream. Okay, okay, I got us, I got us in there. I got us on the on the watchtower. John Horside said, "Speaking of good soundtracks, soundtracks, Fury." No, Road I read that one. Man, oh, did you? Yeah, is that when I was outside? Okay. Uh, did you read this one from Colton? No. Okay. Colton said, other than loud chewing, what's y'all's biggest pet peeves? Mine's either slow walkers or being rushed. Burning Heart is my favorite Rocky song. It's a great. That's a great song. Yeah. That's a great choice. Hmm. No doubt about it. A pet peeve. I'll tell you this, dude. Walking through the grocery store when two people decide to have a conversation and they block their carts together and they decide to be like, hey, That's really bad. Always. oh, that makes me fucking insane for well, sure. I actually will borrow that, like, um, where I live, there's a stop sign, like, right outside my house, and, and, and you have to, when you come out of my driveway, you have to turn right, and you have to, you know, obviously stop at the stop sign. I live in Kentucky, so there's rednecks that will pull up next to each other, and they'll have a conversation, you know, in trucks, and they'll be talking to one another, like, yeah, man, I bought that John Deere lawnmower, I don't know what you're talking about, it works good, it's like, Hey man, don't be talking about like they'll be having this whole conversation, and you're like parked behind them, and you don't want to honk your horn because you don't want to get shot in the face, you know, <laughs> by a fucking shotgun. I hate that shit. I don't like people when they pull up next to one another and they roll their windows down and they're they're like conversing, especially on a street where it's busy. I was like. You guys know each other, right? You guys are obviously friendly and familiar. Why don't you guys just get each other's numbers and you guys can text the shit? You don't need to pull up next to each other and have your fucking windows down and talk about things. I fucking hate that shit. I hate the fuck out of anybody that pulls... Actually, I hate that shit anywhere. When they pull up and they, they start fucking talking, they have no regard for the people behind them. Like, none. They just fucking do it. I hate that shit. Yeah. That's such an I, asshole thing to do. No doubt my number one top. I, I don't think anything makes me mad than the way people eat popcorn in movie theaters. But yeah, that and the, the fucking. Because you don't want to honk your fucking horn because no. I don't want to get fucking shot. I don't want like, some guy like to look like the fucking Russian from The Punisher with Thomas Shane to step yeah, out of the scarf like, what'd you say? Like, nothing. Yeah. And these days you will. You will get shot. Derek said, Jay, do you like Legos? No. <laughs> I never had a Legos in my life. I, I I mean, power to people that I, I never could figure it out. I was stupid. I, I never could figure Legos out, put them together. Reminds me of the, uh, did you ever get when you were a kid connects? Like they would do these whole fucking, like your parents would, for Christmas would get you these great big connects and th there'd be a fucking drill and there'd be like a Ferris wheel. Yeah. Like, I can't figure this shit out. I, I want for me. Dude, that was, the, I never had any desire in my life to get Legos or anything that you have to snap build it and like so had to hard. read instructions, especially when you're yeah. like a kid. You're like, no, nah, fuck that. I'll just get a Power Rangers toy where you could like yeah. hit the belt buckle and their fucking face will change. Yeah, stop trying to grow me as a human. I just want to play fucking that. toys. Uh, Nighttime says only Nicolas Cage movie I like is Con Air. Out that's a good fucking movie. Nighttime? That's a good move. That's, fucking that's a good fucking off, movie though. Leaving Las Vegas. There's, There's a lot of good one? Nicolas Cage, but Con Air is a good one. But I mean, goddamn, man, you're movie. missing out on a lot. <laughs> it is a great movie. Yeah, you got to get on that shit, man. You got to get into that because there's some fucking there's some beauties uh, in that in that realm, no doubt about it. Garrett Veal, what's up, Garrett? You motherfucker said, "What about Free Willy?" Well, that's number one. There's no doubt about it. Another day is gone, ah, but I'm still. <laughs> Is that Free Willy? I don't know, but man, I don't know I, it is. I think that's the song. Is that what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's the song. Uh, yeah, man. That that's the only like I remember watching Free Willy as a kid and then not giving a fuck about it and then hearing Me the too. song I didn't that care. Michael Jackson uh, played and that was the only thing I I remember about it. Dude, that was I was the same kid. I was like, no. everybody's like, oh my god, Free Willy. I was like, I don't give a fuck about that fucking. No, world. I was wrong. I'm, I'm wrong. It's not that one. The River of Jordan. And I will then take you there. 
I know, you I were my I, brother. I thought you had it right the first time. I thought no, you had it, it was the it was time. the wrong one. Yeah, uh, you are yeah. not alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I remember playing that for mom. Uh, me and Cody, <laughs> we had we we burned the uh, we burned the uh, the song onto a disc and we put it into her car, uh, like her CD player in her car. And, and she was taking the school, and I played Free Willy. And she's like, "Oh, he's so lovely." It's just so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh God, I hate, dude. Even when free, like, the, I hated the movie. I hated the soundtrack. Everybody's talking about. It. I was like, "It's about a fucking whale." I watched it. And I was like, "I never. Stop. I couldn't get into it. I never no. could get into it." Same. But I love you, Garrett. Always and forever. Uncultured Dakota says Dane Dehan has returned. Favorite me- remake that isn't O3 Texas Chainsaw Massacre or Dawn mm. of the Dead. Also, have you guys seen Stage Fright? One of the best slashers ever. I think we did a review for that. Isn't that the one with the owl that like murders people? I think Was so. that Stage Fright? That, that may have been familiar. something different. Uh, well, okay. So you ruled out O3 Texas and Dawn of the Dead. I mean, can we say Rob Zombie's Halloween? Uh, I would say that or Amityville Horror remake. Oh, um, oh, maybe 2003. O-9-ish? Yeah, it's 03. Uh, oh, was it 03? Um, yeah. But uh, Ryan Reynolds' Amityville Horror remake, pretty fucking good. I like that one. Yeah, I'll put 07 Halloween. If if I can't if I can't put Texas or Dawn, it'll be 07 Halloween. Mm-hmm. Both those movies were good, and as much shit as Rob Zombie gets, deservedly so. His that, that remake, movie was like good. solid though. Yeah. Yeah, it had its moments. In it. Thank you, Uncultured Dakota. Joe Bob says peer pressure. Join the Discord live on air. No, I don't want to, Joe Bob. <laughs> I didn't want to. You made it unappealing to me. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, Tiffany Hoffman. T- I don't know why I said it that way, Tiffany. I apologize. <laughs> Tiffany Hoffman said, what is your thoughts on Silence of the Lambs, horror or thriller? Well, now that yeah. comes up to a lot of questions. Like, like, there was a couple of movies that you could put as thriller or are they horror? I remember seeing certain movies. I remember seeing Silence of the Lambs as a thriller movie in Hollywood video or blockbuster, but there are other places that would put that as a horror movie. I don't know. I feel like, uh, I don't know, man. Silence of the lambs. Um, I feel like it's more of a thriller because I, I, I never got scared of that movie. I, I just thought it was a really good movie. When I was watching it, I was just like waiting on the next event. I, yeah, I think, I mean, personally, um, which is, it's when when it comes to these things, it's like it's like a, it's like a personal decision versus whatever, which it otherwise makes the list really hard to make because you have to go like based on personal, and then somebody feels like this, it's like some people fucking look at Super Mario Bros as a horror movie, so it makes it hard. Personally, what? I, think I would I would call <laughs> Silence of the Lambs a fucking horror movie because it you know it won the Oscar for Best Picture. I think it's about a serial killer. I think it's about fucked up stuff. But like e- each person could have their own reaction to it, so I don't think there's any right or wrong answer to it for sure. Personally, I'd see Silence of the Lambs as horror, but I don't think there's any any right or wrong. The guy I wish we worked. In a, I wish we worked in a video store and like Just classifying all the fucking movies when they came in together. The thriller mixing movies, together. like there'd be a lot of thriller movies that people would be like, nah, right? That's it's it's what's well, it's an ongoing. That's what, dude. There's so many things that I do that I'm like I. There's these movies like there has to be some. I, I just, of it's got to be a preference listing that you have. Yeah, uh, Daniel Torres says Scream One and Two, H Two O, my top three. Love Ooh. you boys. Get it up. Get it up. Um, hey man, H2O, good for you, man. H Two O, not in either of our um, top fifteen. Uh, I didn't make 90s it. These four movies. Um, oh wait, we didn't we didn't list that real quick. Our, our honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. Yeah, yeah. H Two O was in my honorable mentions. Um, um okay, so um my bonus was Silence of the Lambs, uh Fallen with Denzel, Frighteners, uh Flatliners, amazing, and then I really wanted to put both these movies. I mean <laughs> I don't know. Do I have asterisks? Like I'm like, if you're gonna change your mind Barry later, Bonds. look Barry like Bonds. look look at it, like I have asterisks. Um, it was uh, the. <laughs> see it again. The prophecy and vampires. Yeah, I'm surprised actually. Vampires didn't make your list. I know well, you I wanted it to, but I mean, you, I mean, it, it's like deciding between Dust Till Dawn, 
or vampires. I mean, I'm going to go with vampires. And the prophecy yeah. with Christopher Walken, dude, goddamn. And also, Viggo Mortensen as the devil in that movie is probably one of the best representations of the... I love you more than Jesus. <laughs> Fucking scary, dude. Yeah. Fucking scary. Yeah. Goddamn. My, my honorable mentions real fast. I mentioned several of them, as you mentioned. On the faculty, I really wanted to include that. H2O, um, Night Living Dead remake, New Nightmare, uh, House on Haunted Hill, Exorcist Three was I really I saw it yeah I wanted I wanted on there too Um, End of Days with Schwarzenegger uh, Army of Darkness really Mm -hmm. wanted that in there I wanted that one Horizon and finally Idle Hands were my uh, and these were really hard to keep out but like yeah those are mine for do Army of Darkness was like it almost made it it's tough it's like at fifth I almost put it at fifteen but I was like I can't I can't put it over the nineteen ninety not leaving me dead, but I almost did. Yeah. But I mean, there's it's too much comedy. Mm-hmm. It's too I, much. I get it either way. I get it either way, 100 percent Jay Scott, thanks, dude. He said, What's up, my dude? Just finger popping in real quick. Like I have to times. this tomorrow. NECA is coming out with the predator from Prey Figure. Looks Ooh. sick anyway. I love your butts. Go blue. I think hey. Michigan's fuck you. <laughs> I didn't know NECA was coming out with the predator. That's cool. Uh, from from the Prey movie, yeah, yeah. Uh, I like I don't actually own uh, like a Predator at all. Like I can't believe it. I don't own it at all. But that'd be cool. They got some. There's some good Predators. I wouldn't go with the Prey one personally, but like I, I think probably go the first probably. one. Yeah, yeah. I want I, the OG, yeah. but yeah. But I I love that you said finger popping, and that makes me horny for you mm-hmm. and for life. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate that, man. Uncultured Dakota said Jacob's Ladder should be on this list. Man, I, I like I, I like it was on a maybe for me, but Jacob's Ladder is just not like I mean I don't think it's like um, I I remember renting it once and like liking it. I, I've watched it a few times since, but I never thought it was like a top fifteen nineteen nineties movie, like a horror in my opinion. But it's a good movie. I, it's a good movie. Yeah, I I. I I, I always found Jacob's Ladder to be a little bit overrated. It is listed on Amazon yeah. as a as a drama, like horror or mystery, or like it's in there. It's in the genre for sure. But like, yeah, it never it never got to me in a horror esque sort of way. So, uh, but I, I feel that like that movie got to people. That like, motherfucker needs therapy. It's like good therapy. That dude's been Tim Robbins. He went through nothing to lose, and <laughs> he went through yeah. all that. He's been through a lot. Hard. It was dark times. There was no doubt about it. Michael Parton said, "Phew, I'm so relieved it didn't make y'all's list." Well, it hey, wasn't it in... was close. I mean, I I thought about it too. That was another one I thought about, but I don't know. I it was a TV show, man. It's a TV show. At the end of the day, it's a 1990s TV show. Yeah. Well, and to be honest, it may have made mine. Um, I'm not sure if it would have or not, but it just didn't fall in the parameters because it was listed as a mini series. So when I selected that big list it was like it was it was theater movies and then it was Spawn. video. But i didn't think about tv or like mini video but like no. i get that though i i would actually get it being in someone's list there's no doubt well there was also was spawn the tv show was listed as a 120 right. minute movie which right. made no sense yeah yeah so 100 percent. ismail vega what's up dude says hey guys watch your review for wolf creek i love the movies but i think the series is even more well made and more entertaining i believe wolf creek 3 is in the works too so Mm. when i was looking at movie like horror franchises that are going to come out i read that wolf creek was supposed to come out and then they said they were working on it they said it was in production and they said it was going to happen but then radio silence and that that seems to be a trend with stuff now like they'll announce something like they announced the pumpkin head reboot and then they'll just go dark and there'll be no answers from anybody so i don't know if that's actually going to come out or not i still have to go watch wolf creek 2 and then walk, watch the tv series but like i don't know man hmm. I, eventually i really think wolf creek 3 will happen just because it's a title it's an ip it should happen but i'm excited to see as well my friend i hey man thank you for uh you super chat, bro. Fucking A is Mel Vega, who's got a really name that just rolls off the tongue. The Evil Resident says, what do you think of Exorcist 3? I think Brad Dwarf killed that role. Also, thoughts on Urban Legend and Idle Hands. All 90s, great list, guys. Hey, thanks, man. Um, Exorcist 3 was uh, was another movie that almost made my top 15. Um, I didn't put it in, um, ultimately, because I didn't really discover how great that movie was until later on. Um, and even then I was like, 
again, I was I was basing this list on movies that I saw growing up that had an impact on me that actually was scary to me. And Exorcist Three, while a great film, I don't think it's a scary film. I, I really don't. There, there's a moment or two in the film that's really scary, but I, I feel like it's a great movie. But uh, I didn't put it in my my top fifteen. And Urban Legend and Idol, I think Urban Legend fucking sucks. I think it's an overrated ass movie. I don't think I don't understand why it's even mentioned. I know that people love it. I feel like it's overrated. I think it's stupid. Um, and Idle Hands, while a great movie, I feel like I lean more into comedy. It's more like why I didn't put Army of Darkness in my top 15 as well. You're dealing with more of a comedy movie than a horror movie. But thank you, man. Yeah, Exorcist 3 was... <laughs> Exorcist 3 was one of... <laughs> <laughs> say it's like it's like rubber baby bugger bumpers uh exorcist 3 was one of the movies i really struggled not putting in my top 15 i wanted to so bad because i like it so much but even when i look back at it it feels like more of a like a good fellas like a true crime or uh yeah even, um um true detective is that was it true detective or just crazy uh but it feels like one of those things more than it does a horror movie so i really wanted to include exorcist 3 really badly it's one of the things i struggle with the most as far as urban legend goes i'm getting ready to re-watch that again very soon uh because i i haven't watched it in like 10 years uh, on mm -hmm. its own idle hands i always thought idle hands was kind of fun but it kind of that movie kind of felt like a creep show sort of like uh anthology sort of segment to me that was expanded into a movie like I've never loved Idle Hands the way other people have. This guy album is hot as fuck in that. Well, and it's surprising because they have Offspring in there. It's such a 90s pop punk thing. Like, I should love it more than I do. But, like, and maybe I need to go and rewatch it for sure. But that's why I didn't make the list for me. And Urban Legend, again, uh, I got to go and rewatch that. But out of those, Exorcist 3 was definitely the one I fought with so good. hard to not get in there. Ed Boy Movie says, Sup, y'all? Just caught the stream. Seven on y'all's list, and what slasher should be up along with Myers, Kruger, Voorhees, like the collector or the killer from Hellfest? Which well, I think we have the killer in it. Um, well, I mean, Ghostface will be up there, um, Candyman will be up there, uh, Pinhead will be up there. Uh, you know, and it, it might be controversial. I mean, no, this this isn't controversial. Chucky will be up there. This isn't controversial uh, saying Chucky's up there, but I will say uh, Jeepers Creeper. I, I'll put. I, I felt like he was the last of uh, of the Mohegans to be an original yeah. character, a new type of slasher, and because of unfortunate circumstances of of his creator being a complete d bag. Yeah, you know, there's a shadow that exists over him, or and, and Candyman. I'm sorry, Candyman too. But yeah, I mean, I like I always hear people like Jeepers Creepers. You're a fucking creep if you like them. That's not true. Nah, it's it, that's it's so it, fucking it. dumb. I hate when people say that. Like the creator was a d bag. He was a dirt right. shit hole human being. But you cannot tell me that Jeepers Creepers, the creeper, was not one of the last of the true guard. That you know, and you, what have you had since then? Like fucking conjuring, fucking paranormal activity. Yeah. Well, who's your who's your main go to guy? I'm um, with the ones that Jay said. I would also include I'd include Pinhead. I'd include Leatherface. Um, you know, uh, yeah. uh, among those that Jay said as well. And and I agree with the fact that the Creepers not based on just the guy who directed him. No, just the guy. It yeah. was a horseshit situation. But um, Creep, the guy from Creep. I almost. Um, well, I couldn't include him in that list. That was a different list I was thinking of. But uh, Peach Fuzz from Creep. There's a ton uh, for sure, man. But I appreciate it, Ed Boy. Thanks, man. And hopefully the fucking collector will get their shit together and make another movie. Barb says, can we request a comedy slash horror ranking night? Best top 10 comedy horror movies of all time would be a fun ass list to make. Mm -hmm. I feel like it would always end in Shaun of the Dead, but who knows? I would imagine that would probably be number one. It's one of the best ones ever. There's no doubt about that. DJ Graham said, recently started uh, watching Dahmer on Netflix and like all crime dramas, I'm addicted. Richard Jenkins made me tear up when he found out about his son. Dude, I only watched like the first two episodes and I was fucked up. I was torn. I was withdrawn. I felt strange deep inside of my cockles at night and I never finished it. So I'm pretty sure that that show is fucked up and dark and twisted, but I've never had the balls to go back any deeper because it made me feel weird in my butthole. 
I haven't watched Somber at all. Like I, I think I saw I, I I've seen enough of that motherfucker. I don't care. <laughs> like I don't need to watch like a, a like a like you know um a Dexter type of invention on Netflix of Dahmer, but yeah, cool. <laughs> It'll make you feel strange in your hole. I don't want it. I don't yeah. have that. I already feel strange enough. I don't need it. I don't need the Our extra thing, feel strange. thing. Dana Flora says, go to Lexington, Kentucky, October 19th to 21st. Any re recommendations? The only mm. thing I can tell you, man, is uh, the, 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 the best restaurant to eat at is Shamrocks on Richmond Road. They have amazing burgers and beers, and it's a good place to stop. Uh, as Jay said, if you're looking for karaoke, Shinaway, but that is yeah. a little sketchy late at night. Careful. I mean, if you want to hit every fucking facet of Kentucky, go to Shinaway. End of the story. I mean, if you want to hit every Sketchy. fucking facet of Kentucky where you're going to probably way. meet people from outside of the state, don't bring go to kids. Kentucky. All right, I mean, go to Shinaway in Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, That's what you yeah. need to do. Yeah. Don't bring the kids. Uh, but food wise, I always tell people Shamrocks, Richmond Road, they got great burgers, they got a great time. Um, given more time, we could probably give you a way better recommendation. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> And then and that, want, like yeah. you're you're asking like our drunk friend, where should we go? Like that's, <laughs> that's where you're gonna go. <laughs> that's but other it. than that, my friends, we are gone. We're fucking out of here. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us all night long, way further than we meant to go. We had a good yeah. time. We love your fucking faces, always and forever, forever and always, always Fun and time, forever. Mm bop, dooby dot bop, do bop, dooby dot bop, mm bop. Yeah. Eiffel Check 65 out. is still alive. <laughs> I'm blue. If Don't I was ever let no one tell you different. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys soon. Thank you all for hanging out with us so much. We love See you guys. You. Good night. Love you.